can of be. Fuck it, we'll do it live. live. Well, that's the first that's thing kind I said. That's kind of problem solving. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, we're, I'm just, I sound low to them. I know I, I, should, I probably sound just fine to you all, according to OBS here. So I'll just fix that for them real quick. Hi, everyone. How are y'all doing? I did just update my drivers. Yo. Maybe that did it. Chat, who has the, their, their ticket for Dune Part 2? Let's go. I got a plane ticket to Orlando, <laughs> baby. Okay. Uh, uh, oh, shucker. Yeah. Where's that? Right. Oh, that's just soon. I have the house that are here. Let's and be good. You just, wanna... um, yeah, it's just, I want to see the. I, I want to let that slide, Dr. Ryan, because that's more a self report. I approved it immediately. Test, 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 yeah. test, 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 test. Listen, I mean, that's just a gross thing. talks about so you know it what? all the time. How can it be banned in the chat? <laughs> yeah. What? Just, I guess you're right. Yeah. The, 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 the fucking that popcorn bucket. Oh, yeah. Bucket. That's fine. Well, listen, I'm, I, I, just because I'm compelled uh, by my remember. dark passenger doesn't mean everyone can talk about it. Well, um, the rain is coming down now. If you lose me, you'll know why. Okay. Uh, almost set up over here, everybody. <laughs> uh, you, uh, let me check windows. Okay. Is, is the internet like uh, water? Is not waterproof over there? Well, there's lightning also, like just now. Uh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> to be clear. Have you, you broke into roboting the second you said uh, that, so I will leave you. Hey, I have not had to do this windows thing. Where do I find it? Uh, right click Whoa. your speaker and then do sounds. Yeah, that's where I'm at. Is it more sound settings? And then go go into recording, select your microphone, and then it's under levels. Okay, wait. In recording? Yeah, right click specifically on yeah, your microphone. Double, double click the microphone you're using. And then oh, go to levels. okay. Right, okay, cool. All right, let me do that. Yeah. Man, that Which... lightning like shook the house. That was crazy. My uncle's brother died to oh, a light. Oh, no, that's the wrong thing. Okay, yeah. Let me do this instead. My this uncle did. It. Yeah, not Your sound mixing, just straight yeah. up sounds. Wait, you both have uncles that died to lightning? I'm an uncle. My uncle's brother. <laughs> Fuck, shut up, Mike. <laughs> 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 you, the man up. somehow <laughs> found a way. <laughs> what? When you think about it, it's kind of actually about me. Uh -huh. Do mm -hmm. I have? Do I have power with this overlay? Let's see. Let's just. Uh, All right. Uh, you know what I'm saying? You should be thinking about Christian. Hello. You know what I'm Hello. Asking? Hello. Hello. Is that better? Uh, is, is this better? Maybe. Is this Maybe? better? I think so. Is this, this better? Is, is, this, oh, we're getting there. Uh, no, that's as high as it goes. <laughs> so that, it, uh, better, oh, it better okay. be there. Well, yeah. No, no, okay. that sounds right. I think that sounds right. That sounds, that sounds good right. to me. This is probably, I, yeah. I would probably have this set to 100, so this should be right. Yeah. I would just, I would so that's everything. normal. That's normal. Because, yeah, I turned you back down to 90%. You sound uh, on level with Fantastic. Mike. Fantastic. So okay. You're motherfucking deaf, Mike. <laughs> I don't know why you're talking about Mike, don't you have uncles? Aren't you worried about them? Oh, there's other people. <laughs> All right. I think Jesus. we are about good to go. Let me just get YouTube set up for me, and then we'll be ready. I guess I could Let's tweet, see. too. Hey. Uh, Let's go. Oh, Christ. What? What are you talking about? What's Miss Christine about? Nothing. All right. Slippery slope is what I'm saying. Oh, don't worry about it. Uh, put the link to the thread up in podcast uh, for y'all to have. Oh, is that some Undertale music right here? Yes, it is. Nice. You'll see it uh, above people, that picture. People always complain about Undertale's community. I'm like, yeah, but where are you all at? Where like you have to deal with Undertale's community? <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I mean, you know what they are? Where they're at? Being an Undertale fan in that community, being part of That's the problem. Just don't just don't be in that yeah. message board or whatever. I don't know. Like, I've never <laughs> encountered them once. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, all right. Tweeting. Hmm. Thinking about hmm. changing the cover of the game as the side podcast to something else, but... Cover. Yeah. The cover. The cover. That's good. What's wrong with the cover? Uh, just, I just found a new, but a new favorite picture. Oh my god! <laughs> you can make it the episode one if you want. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you have free reign there. 
No, all not right. free reign. Well, no, hang okay, on. Now I'm gonna, we're not <laughs> free up. reign. All right. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna get a steal us at ASAP. <laughs> it's gonna be like it's gonna literally. Look, I'm just gonna say that the twin towers will be involved somehow. Just say he has free reign. I'll just say it, and he'll be like, "That's a funny joke." <laughs> I thought Chris was gonna put a different pair of twins on the album mm, yeah, this well, week, he definitely but, is. You know, he's that's what I'm concerned about. Twin towers, <laughs> all right. Oh, oh, it was funny. A second teeth, I hate the... Yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't remember that tragedy. Uh, our right. friend George is really mad about our 9-11 um, uh, concerns. <laughs> I'll say. He, got, he yelled oh, at me no. on Twitter. Uh, I think he yells at us all the time. I, he used to be on here, at least, and then he, like, really turned against us. Yeah, I can't... And I can't... <laughs> honestly, can't even remember which fanboy he is. I can't remember if he's an Xbox or a PlayStation fanboy. Yeah, oh, I, Please, I never keep you. Yeah, yeah, I can't keep track of that. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm like meandering everybody. I'm just like doing one last final thing. I tweeted uh, music. That's what it is. All right. We should still get about 9-11. What's wrong with that? <laughs> exactly. It was a tragedy. Yeah, it reminds me of that tragedy. Uh, okay. There it is. All right. So let's turn what? off this. Good timing there. <laughs> I love that message hey, you, you put. Hear me? put... Start we hear that. Now. There it is. Yum yum. That is probably pretty low for chat, but chat, it should be fine now. Okay, let's uh, let's do this. Mike, you ready? Ready. All right, we are going in five, four, three. Hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now! Yeah, yeah let's get this over with. <laughs> Woof woof! Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I am a Nintendo. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I am a Nintendo. And we are the last of the Nintendo. Woof Today, woof woof! It's best Pokemon I can do. Pokemon is gonna get legendary once again. Nintendo is suing Yuzu, and we're gonna talk about Nintendo DS hidden gems. It's February 27th, 2024. Jeff, how are you doing? You know what, Jim? I wish was hidden. Jim Ryan, get out of here, you butthole. I guess he is getting out of here, but... So, yeah, here is number one fan, remember? Yeah, no, that, that was always a joke. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what? No way! <laughs> uh, yeah, no, hey, I'm, I'm doing okay. I'm, I'm like, I feel mostly fine, except for like right through the top of my head, I, there's like this like constant low-level headache from the, probably an ear infection, and then my voice is still like a little bit weak. But other than that, I feel I feel pretty good. I went on a long walk this morning. That was great. Uh, did the bomb cast today? That was a lot of fun. I watched you guys talk over Pokemon. That was a good time. I, I've I've had a good day. Hey, I was no, I was about to say I was on more jump of content than you, but then I remembered that you. Uh, I did my Mario Maker. Mario Maker. Hey, but unless I'm fine with that. If you guys want to do stuff without me every once in a while, that'd be cool. <laughs> uh, hey, I'll be happy to. I'd, I'd love to do stuff without you. Screw you. I'm sick and tired of your face. You were in my Shit, dream. You're not my to say it out loud. You were in my nap dream just now. You're following me. There. Everybody's been dreaming about you, Emron. Well, to be fair, you were in Emron's dream too. But uh, do you do you know that new new Nick Cage movie is about exactly that, where all these oh. people are dreaming about Nick, this Nick Cage character, even though he's not famous or anything. They just like millions of people. He's suddenly showing up in their dreams, that's and I feel like that's happening to me right now. So. Honestly, really yeah. what it is, is like we podcast so much that we are now podcasting in people's dreams because that's the only way we could, oh, way yeah. we could actually keep up with it. I'm glad that it's still bad podcast that we do. Yeah. In the dreams. It's not I, like the quality goes up. I do need to get that line because I think I might start ending our podcast with that line every time because that was really good. <laughs> oh, my God. It was incredible. Uh, yeah, I for need people to don't know, Imran line. tweeted that uh, me and Mike showed up at his childhood home to record a podcast. And then when we were done, I was like, sometimes, you know. Head. I shook my head uh, and said, sometimes you know when you recorded the worst podcast in the world. I'm like, they, it's the exact quote here. Sometimes you simply know when you just recorded <laughs> the worst podcast <laughs> in history. Okay, yes, that's, I gotta, I'm gonna oh get this written down, put it in the doc. <laughs> I love, uh, that might have to be our, yes, sign yeah, off. It's our sign now. off. It absolutely is. <laughs> that's um so good. Oh, all right. Uh, well, hey, you know, Jeff, I had a little toothy ache. I took some like a leak, oh, no. though. It feels better. So, hey, like it's not all about you <laughs> uh, and your problems. Th this toothache, uh, is it something that's happened before or what? Um, Yeah, I have a this is actually a uh, crowned tooth. Uh, One of my front teeth. Oh, sure. There was an it's I fought over a puppet with some kid in third grade 
and somehow he accidentally smashed my face on like a marble like windowsill. So like I cracked a good a little chunk of that tooth off, but then as like I grew every once in a while, they had to keep like making that tooth more and more of a nub for the veneer or whatever right. they put over it. And like one time something happened and there was like an infection there and it was bad. Uh, and like I had to like go to the hospital for it even. Uh, and ever since then, every once in a while, it gets a little sore sometimes, okay. maybe. So but, it, uh, it's yeah. already a fucked up tooth that they've looked at. Okay. Because I was going to say, I, I, ignored, oh, yeah. I ignored a toothache once, and it's like, that's when I needed to get a root canal. And I'm like, I will not do that ever again. Uh, no, there's been a few root canals like on this tooth and the nerves there because of that, just like killing the nerve endings and whatnot. Right, exactly. All because of some puppet. <laughs> Listen, this is why I can't, tr you can't trust puppets. Sorcerers, sometimes. Puppets, never. I'm not going to say it here, but I remember that kid's name. Isn't that weird? The things you remember. I remember yes, that it is weird, name. but I, I know what you mean. Like, uh, I was thinking the other day of, I don't know his full name, but I remember uh, the first day at first grade, Keith, we like, met like right outside the, the school on the first day of school. And I thought about him for some reason the other day. And that was weird. So like, I don't remember. Yeah. I don't think a single other day from first grade, but meeting Keith on day one. I remember that. Hey. All right, Jeff, we've got some uh, Nintendo news to go through here. You ready for it? I am ready for that, especially since I'm now pasting the outro here. There we go. All right. I was going to do that myself. I got it. It's there. <laughs> yeah. Are we going to like, do we have to credit somebody for something that you say in their dream? No, I'm going to say that we own that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that would hold up in court. He said that you said it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> if, 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 if someone's like, this sounds like something you would say. It's like uh, when Al, when a Weird Al does a cover of like not like a song, but of like a band's style. Mm. He's done a few of those. That's what like that is. Be stupid. Yes, exactly, exactly. So we had that Pokemon presents today. Um, there were some things. Mm. Sorry, uh, Sean just said. I think Imran will let you have that one. <laughs> what? No, he's <laughs> gonna fight us for it. <laughs> Maybe he thinks it's a good line. All right, I'm sorry, Mike. Go ahead. Um, so there's a bunch of stuff here. It's Pokemon Horizons crossover Pokemon Go. Uh, uh, Sean seems very excited about a Pokemon called Kirilledge. Kir 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 oh, Kir Jesus fucking Christ, Mike. That's an English word. Cerulege. <laughs> Cerulean. Cerulege. Cerulean. There's a town in Pokemon named after this color. C oh, this is the Pokemon that's just zero. From Mega yeah, Man it's Zero. just Mega Man EXE from Mega Man Battle Network. Yes, it is. Okay, that's neat. So there you go. Um, there's a new Pokemon just trading like it card game. Just like it has the game. word edge in it. Yeah. New Pokemon trading card game, Pokemon TCG Pocket, announced for mobile coming later this year. This is different than the Pokemon trading card game that already exists. This is a mobile first. Uh, apparently, it's, it's kind of like this Yu-Gi-Oh! Duel Links game where it's not going to be like the full like set of cards it's not going to try to be synchronous with the normal card releases i believe and it's a truncated version of the game but again very mobile friendly it's very much like about opening the packs and collecting and then you know yeah you play the game but the collecting almost seems more important i don't know somebody hasn't really played pokemon cards in a long time this almost looks slightly appealing to me yeah same actually <laughs> Yeah, actually, I don't know, Jeff. You ever played Pokemon cards very much? Absolutely not. No, I, I um, yeah, you don't I, have that stink about you. No, thank you. I appreciate you noticing that. I uh, did. I spent a hot and heavy summer playing Magic: The Gathering in um, in Boy oh, Scouts yeah. when we had summer camp, and we we, we all got cards and we're playing all that whole camp. Uh, and then I think I've played a couple other like maybe Star Wars games. I like learned them, and that was it. But that's it. Never touched any other card game really. So. Uh, Watching this trailer, uh, like I was on my walk, I was looking at it, you guys were talking over it. I'm like, this app looks pretty slick, even if it is just opening the card packs, which we all kind of assumed for a second it might just be that. And then they said, no, it's also, you can play this like express version of the game. And I'm like, oh, that, that seems pretty cool. Yeah, I think if I did play Pokemon cards, I would want to play an express version of it. Actually. Yeah, exactly. I want to spend as little time of my life in that as possible. It, like, apparently you do get packs for free, at least, like maybe twice a day so i don't know if this is something i opened just to like get some packs every day and look at that it might be kind of neat i don't might know be we'll yeah see. might be we'll see how interested i am in it when it actually comes out later this year I, I, it no. does make me wonder if there's like uh other versions of this game uh with other ip like if there are if there is the star wars trading game that is just like this uh that's already on phones and i just haven't noticed it before well, and if not maybe that'll start happening i mean they definitely had a something on phones where it was because you know there's 
there was the TCG for Star Wars, but then there was actually just the collectible cards only. And there's definitely a Star Wars collectible card game app at one point that was just about collecting cards. Yes, there, that, that, was, that, that was a popular genre of app for like a couple of years there. I know WWE mm -hmm. had that stuff. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, Got to wake me up when you get the Lurkana uh, mobile app. Uh, all right. Next up, last big thing from the Pokemon thing was uh, the announcement of Pokemon Legends uh, Z-A. I'm just going to say Zaw. Uh, a few things interesting about this, Jeff. For one thing, everybody everybody was expecting some kind of black and white Generation 6 adjacent announcement. Uh, or Generation 5, excuse me. This is Generation 6. This is from the Pokemon uh, Y and X games. This is taking place in Lumo City, which is that city that basically is supposed to be like Paris. And even though it's, it's called Pokemon Legends, Zaw... It's still not entirely sure what this game is. Supposedly, it takes place entirely in that city, which would be very different from what we got in Arceus. There might be a there's, there's kind of there's like a focus on urban development in this trailer. It's hard to tell what exactly is going on here. And then the other interesting thing, um, this game is coming in 2025. And I guess I want to start there, Jeff, because I assumed whatever they were showing this is going to be something that's going to help give the Switch a game for this calendar year. Because right. we have no idea what's coming out holiday 2024. And I was like, ah, well, they'll have some kind of Pokemon game and something else. Who knows what? That'll be fine because you'll have the Pokemans. This coming in 2025 is interesting. Uh, why do you think that is? Yeah, I, I mean, I think that I, I started from the same supposition that you did, that what the Switch needs this year is at least one big game to see them through the holidays. And the safe bet is, because there usually almost always is one, a Pokemon release. Um, I think that if we kind of like shift our perspective a little bit and like start thinking about like what's best for the Pokemon company, them getting away from that. No, there's a new something every holiday and and being more willing to push things out just a little bit more. If, if uh, it gives that a little bit extra time to get things to look right and feel right now, of course, the last Legends game came out early in the year right uh, that was uh, early 2022 right. early 2022 not that long ago actually right. it feels like a long time ago because it was so, pre scarlet and violet so really they may, might just be following their playbook as well which is something they often do uh, over there at the pokemon company it's like we, we did it this way before we're going to keep doing it that way we re release a new one of these games every three years we're going to keep releasing these games every three years well, and legends games now come out in early parts of the year it's something that they might just be doing that but i hey it's weird that nintendo is not going to have a big pokemon game going through the holiday I mean, was they were they supposed to have a big Pokemon game for the holiday back when uh, the Switch 2 was going to come out this holiday? Is yeah, that that's why possible. this is a 2025 game? Is this a early or even a launch game for the Switch well, 2? I mean, they are clearly being coy about naming platforms. Like, that was not... They, they didn't talk about, like, Switch. Now, they they, diff, they definitely have uh, Switch logos. Like, if you look at Pokemon Legends, uh, Za. Uh, like the splash screen, I think this is from the trailer, uh, but at least on their tw their Twitter account, it does say releasing releasing simultaneously worldwide in 2025, and in the top right, a big Nintendo Switch lo logo there. But I think in other places they've mentioned mentioned Switch platforms, something along those lines. So I think it's we, we all have every right to assume that this is going to be a Switch and Switch Two game, if not at the same time, very quickly uh, after its release, uh, the the the, plat the release of the Switch Two. That is. Mm -hmm. Well, are you excited for this game at all? I mean, I don't know if the idea of well, one, I, I think Legends was definitely my favorite Pokemon game like since the DS era. So I, I had guess a lot I'm of fun playing Legends. Brand continue, but now I'm kind of confused about ex what exactly this is because I don't like if it's a Pokemon City Builder and we've seen Pokemon games struggle graphically for a while. Maybe if it's on Switch Two, it might help a bit. But a really dense urban Pokemon game, that might be pretty rough looking. I don't know. Yeah, I'm like, uh, I, I kind of want to check this out again. Because, I mean, I, when I was watching it, it's like, yeah, there's some city building stuff. But I couldn't tell if it was, you know, um, like a full Just flair or, or like, you know, the thing that happens in a lot of games these days where it's like, oh, you, once you go back to your town. Yeah, you're building up your town. But that's like the thing. Like, it's like going to your XCOM base, right? That's not the game. It's just the thing that you're doing between missions is this the thing you're doing between going out and catching pokemon I, I don't know they said it all takes place in lumino city so i it starts it starts to make me think this is just maybe more of a city builder than i'm even realizing right it's it's very confusing and i kind of wish we had a little bit more info on it but 
again, it's not coming out for about a year. I mean, again, no one's talking about this possibility. They only said 2025, not early 2025. No, they didn't. It could yeah. be a holiday 2025 game. For all we know, really, that would be a pretty long time to wait between big Pokemon releases for the Pokemon company. But a lot of us have kind of been begging them to take more time. So I guess I couldn't really complain uh, if that was the case. In the trailer, like, okay, so in the trailer, it starts off with, well, it starts off with, like, the unknown text, all that stuff. And then um, and then it says, urban development plan for blank city. And then obviously, that's going to be Lumino City. And then it has, like, what looks like old-timey blueprints of... The building being drawn, and then they draw Pikachu on top of that. And then it goes to the fucking Tron world. So that's, like, where I was, yeah. like, so lost. Like, is this a... Anybody see the movie Tron? <laughs> is this a no. futuristic game, or is it a past game, like like the other Legends game? Um, I, I don't know. I, I guess once well, I you... assume it's a past game where about, like, the building of the city, the city. Right? Yeah, sure, but then why the Tron shit, Mike? Because Tron's cool. Everyone, Tron's in right now. Well, Kids guess, can't stop talking about Tron. Say, I guess that's a pretty good point. Right. Sean... You've been quiet. I know you're, you you care about the Pokemans a lot. Why do you parse of all of this? <laughs> okay, well, specifically for ZA, if you're trying to like figure out what that means, uh, I mentioned when we did our Giant Bomb reaction, that is likely a reference to the character AZ, who is extremely important to the plot of the story of X and Y, where he's he set off this machine that like backfired on him. And because it dealt with like time travel and life force and all this anime bullshit, he was granted eternal life. So I assume, yeah, of course, duh. you know, as you do, um, I assume ZA is a reference to him in some way. And because it's Z hyphen A, I think this is some fucking Square Enix way of them showing like Z to A is current to past, like yeah. Omega to oh, Alpha, sure. like yeah, we're okay. going back or something like that. Which to you know that's how Legends Arceus starts. You get Isekai into the past. Yeah, I, for, I forgot that game was an Isekai, and then I think you said yeah. someone said that today, and I was like, oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Yeah. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's what's going on here. And the the Tron shit is like the Pokemon Z aspect of it that we never got, where like it's modern day, and you know we're looking at Lumios as we know it now, and then. For whatever reason, whether it's flip flopping or if it's we go back once and then stay there, you get sent to the past and then you get to see how Lumio City developed. You, you know, I, I could see it working like you build the city in the past and then when you do that, it affects like what you can do in the future, right? It creates infrastructure in the city. Yeah, I think that's uh, and like as like, long as, long the, as the building of the town is empowering more traditional Pokemon stuff, I'm on board. I think this is a good yeah. idea. And the Pokemon, you know, like, obviously they're going to use hyperbolic language because that's what they do. Right. But the Pokemon uh, Twitter account says that's an ambitious new game. So I won't be surprised if they did were implementing something different like that. Because I think, and I mentioned this to you guys when you were doing the Bombcast, I think Pokemon Legends doesn't mean what we think it means, where we hear Legends and we think every game's going to be like Arceus. But I think Legends is just going to be their catch-all for what they effectively see as a spinoff that ties into the modern games. Like, it'll probably have traditional battling in some way. It'll probably have traditional collecting in some way. It'll tie into, like, Pokemon Home and all that. But Legends is just the title that they're giving to something that is very different, something that is not your traditional... And deals with the past in some way, yes. Stuff. Yeah. And, it, and also deals with the lore of the world. Yeah, yes. the past and so on. Yeah, I yeah. hope it's a little bit. Like, I like Arceus. I kind of want well, that, a listen, little bit more of that. If Arceus is the only game that's like that, they have messed up. Because Arceus should have been, like, we all talked about it at the time. Well, well this is the new, you know, it's a tertiary Killer. version of the, So we're going to get the remakes. We're going to get the new games. And then we'll get Legends games. And they'll be just like Arceus. And I still want that. I hope we're still getting that. Because I really yeah, like Arceus contrary, a lot. Contrary to popular belief, Game Freak is aware of what people think yes, of the various definitely. games. And more, like, I think more they, aware than ever. Yeah, they know, and there's been even reporting of like how some of the staff, especially the younger staff, feels about the reception to some of the current games like Scarlet and Violet. And so maybe they are changing things within the studio. Like Jeff, you said, they need to get off the yearly schedule. They need to give their teams more time because that's the problem with the games right now. It's the problem with Scarlet and Violet. Not that, like, you know, there's not talented devs or anything like that. No, no, no. They're putting their blood, sweat, and tears in these games. It's management saying, we need a game every year. So if they're moving away from that, they're spacing them out, and they're giving the team more creative freedom with stuff like Legends, I think that's going to be better for everyone involved. Especially if, like, um, a friend of the show, Jordan Midler, said on his Pokemon podcast, Secret, uh, Secret Rare, with, by the way, everyone should check out. It's very good. Yeah, he's a Pokemon um, freak. 
sort of had a theory of like, what if they delay the next full generation all the way to the 30th anniversary of the series and just do one massive thing for it? Which I mean, seems bizarre because that'd be 20, uh, 26. Yeah, a couple but, years away still. But if you think about it, they don't have a major release lined up for this year. Maybe they announce something black and white related for later in the year. And then Legends is next year. It feels very odd that they have nothing for this year. So I won't be surprised if maybe those remakes are real or if they have something else to fill in. Or and then Legends is the big game for next year, and then maybe we do get Gen Ten in uh, twenty six. That, that makes a deal. lot of sense. I assume that something with Black and White is still coming. Clearly later yeah. than we thought. It's not happening this year. It's not going to happen at least in early twenty twenty five. But there will be remakes of Black and White. There's no reason to stop that train from going. So yeah, if, that could tie people over. I think it was honestly a little weird how quickly you would have like the Diamond Pro remake happen between the normal gens. It almost kind of just incentivized me from playing it. I was like, yeah, I just did this shit. Here we go again. Um, especially ha- especially if they are much more ambitious with the Black and White remake than they were with Diamond and Pearl. That would be completely fine as the, the Pokemon game for a little bit. Um, Jeff, I guess going back to what does the Switch have in 2024? I mean, do we still think there's going to be some big surprise game coming later this year? Do you think there's going to kind of plug those holes with more remasters and remakes. I mean, I, they'll, they'll definitely plug it with remasters and remakes. We often say, well, Nintendo has to, and then we always stop on the show and go, Nintendo doesn't have to do anything. It's Nintendo. Yeah. They do things their own way. Uh, they, they would, they would, and they have, and they might go through a year without having like the big thing. That's a, to- that's entirely a possibility, especially if they are changing their plans as late as we all think they are, which is sounds like that's exactly what happened. Relatively late change of plans for the switch Two release from this year to early next year. So if that, if that throws a wrench into the works, they, they will, they'll adapt as best they can. They'll move things around, but that does not mean necessarily that we're guaranteed some big release. Something could still happen with Metroid Prime 4, but something might not happen with Metroid Prime 4 until the next system. But that's, both are possible. And really that's the only one on the table that feels like could be big enough and could be like, I, I know you're skeptical, skeptical. I bet you still, even you believe like if one was going to happen, that was going to be a big, that's the oh, most likely yeah. one, right? Oh, to be clear, like as I don't, as long as I think it can't possibly happen, that's why right. it's a fun bet. Right, exactly. Uh, sure, yeah. yeah, that can happen. Right, because, it's I more mean, likely than like them putting like the new next Mario out or something like that. That's just right. well, no I mean, way. At this point, it is the one like announced Nintendo game. Even though we know Metroid doesn't necessarily sell as well as a Mario or a Zelda or a Luigi's Mansion. At this point, it's something that they have announced that has been worked on that is a big deal for sure. Uh, so I don't know, yeah, like, you know, again, we, there's things we know that they are, they probably have worked on, like that um, Fire Emblem remake for Metroid Prime 2 or 3, and a couple of Zelda games that haven't been ported over yet. There are other things that they can do, but I do wonder, like, I mean, are we going to get something like, uh, you know, new F-Zero or something like that, something that's new and feels like a big deal? And maybe not. Maybe they really are going to be shoring up for that Switch 2 launch, and that's just kind of the way this year is going to be for Switch. And it'll still mostly be fine. There'll still be plenty of fun things to play. But yeah, just I'm, I'm, I'm happy to play like a Thousand Year, year Door. Like, that's where I'm at. I'm yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, give me a Thousand Year Door. If, I mean, if they put out Wind Waker or Twilight Princess, again, we don't know. Uh, but if they, Boy, if that they sure did, would help. That would Why go don't over they just great. Do that? They, they should just do that. That would be fantastic. And a Fire Emblem remake? I'm, hey, I would love that. That'd be great, too. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I I think I'd be super down for that. So yeah, they have they have options here. Um, other news story here, Jeff. Nintendo is suing the Yuzu creators. This is from Steven Datillo. Uh, Yuzu is the popular Switch emulator. Uh, Nintendo is saying that it illegally circumvents Nintendo's software encryption and facilitates piracy. Nintendo is seeking damages for alleged violations and has shut down the emulator. It notes that one million copies of Tears of the Kingdoms were downloaded prior to the game's release. I even saw them complaining in the filing about spoilers and stuff. I don't yeah. think spoilers are illegal. Probably but, not. Um, uh, I don't, what do you make of this, Jeff? We talk all the time. Nintendo's can be a pretty scary uh, legally, right? Uh, yes. I, I'm glad I'm not involved in Yuzu right now. Uh-huh. Uh huh. So yeah, I mean, this is the kind of thing where Nintendo has lawyers that are, are almost certainly looking at this stuff constantly and for years, and so they probably have a backlog of weapons that they can wield against uh, uh the people that make yuzu where it's like hey we you know we've gone in there we, we've been tracking these things we have people in the discord 
like we ask questions and then we put that stuff on the record and we have it all saved ready to go um i think the idea of them actually going after them is a little surprising but it's nintendo they wouldn't do it unless they were pretty sure because for one they would not want to risk losing a case about this because they they, they want to have the power of the cease and desist and if if we get live in a world where nintendo lost the one time that they sued over an emulator um, people would be like, your cease and desist doesn't seem to mean a lot because you lost your case. And then, so we're going to feel a lot more comfortable ignoring that and seeing if you actually want to go to court. Um, I, I also think that Nintendo probably is doing this. I, I, I you know, I'm, I'm, this is a pet theory. I'm, I'm growing a little bit more confident in it that Nintendo's doing this because the Switch 2 is delayed. If the Switch 2 was coming out this year, they'd like, let's just focus on that. Having to go through another holiday where people like basically like the, uh, a piracy on switch is to a point where the, the game can like people can download it a million times before it comes out i'm sure that's the biggest game but if that's possible for zelda it's possible for every game and it, it, like it's you know percentage of their revenue it's not like some huge amount but every percentage is going to count when they have to get through a holiday where they're not expecting a ton um so i think this is them like pulling the trigger on something they probably won't have wanted to do for a long time their, their position here that it illegally circumvents Nintendo software encryption and facilitates piracy. I think the circumventing encryption will be the thing that gives them the most leg to stand on. That stuff is, like there's stuff about that in the DMCA, there's stuff in, like, like that in, in several different laws. That's, um, you're not, you're typically not allowed to do that. Uh, even if it's something you own, you're like, hey, this is my own, my own thing. Well, if you're circumventing a company's encryption, you are usually in violation of a law um, and Nintendo is going to try to like, hey, we're going to actually enforce that and see if we can get get some get somewhere and, with it. We'll see. And Nintendo pointed out in the filing um, that you know the Yuzu people have a Patreon, right? And their Patreon like spiked when Tears of the Kingdom came out and stuff. So yep. you know you can kind of see how I suppose they are directly profiting off of Nintendo's work in a lot of ways. I also wonder if this is about you know the timing here. Hey, hey, let's let's put this one to bed. So people maybe think twice about doing this with the switch too right right i mean it just give a yes you're right a few more obstacles a few more obstacles a little bit more friction will slow things down a little bit and that's what they're looking for they're looking for just opportunities to make money without the interference of piracy things like that um if people are worried about old emulators this is that this, this probably wouldn't affect them the the encryption for that stuff sure. w- w- like it wasn't as sophisticated um and most of that stuff was developed in a clean room, completely bypassing all of these problems. Uh, you know, these modern systems are a little bit different, a little bit tricky. We saw with the, um, was it Wii U, where it has like the copyrighted like string in there that Nintendo like might own, and that's been a problem. That's why it got removed from Steam. Um, things like that, like the, the more modern that systems. Was GameCube, I believe. That was just yeah, the game, straight up. Uh, yeah, Dolphin. Just, well, game. Yeah, it was that was might have been Wii. It was a it was GameCube or Wii, but it was Dolphin, right? Oh, okay. Um, oh, we, we, excuse me. Yes. It's so, but it's like, yeah. So the, the more modern systems do have things in there where Nintendo would have legal tricks to shut these emulators down. If they were to choose to take it to court, they're obviously just going to do this with the things that are actively making them money though. So I, I don't think this is going to be some, um, huge burden on emulation going forward. It might just slow things down. Like you said. All right, Jeff, that's it for the news right now. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back and we'll read these super chats. How's it sound, buddy? Sounds great. All right. Be right back. Oh, check this shit out. What, your Sephiroth cat? Right, yeah. I'm, I'm looking at this. You need to see us, Jeff. It's so good. I'm clicking on it. All right. I, ca- I like kitties. He's got, it's got a cat tail. Oh, goodness. It's a fox tail. Oh, fox tail. Big Excuse difference. me. Big difference. <laughs> Don't be. Ye- <laughs> that means nice kitty cat or something like that. Sephiroth. Oh, that, that looks delicious. All right, that's a fun commercial. It's got the sexy whispering in the ear and everything. Yeah. Oh, wait, what the hell? What is this on the corner here, Christian? I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it had the, yeah, they had the stereo whispering in the ear, the ASMR. Yeah. yeah. The S stands for Sephiroth. Uh, Jeff, Jeff, you see this Pokemon that we were talking about earlier? I, Jesus Christ, Christian. What? I don't know what you're talking about. What's going on? I don't see, I really don't see anything. Uh, okay. Uh, I saw, uh, is it a n- new version of Cerulege? I, I might have saw, or Cerule- is no, it Cerulege? No, it's just a newer Pokemon. Okay, uh, I saw it. Yeah, I and mean, it looks like one that you're horny for. I don't know. 
What now? T t I'm not horny for Mega Man, dude. Like, come on now. Okay. How? Let's rule edge. Let me take a look here. Did you see oh, the? Yeah, yes, look at that. Did you see? Oh yeah, Mega it does. Man, it does just kind of straight up look like a Mega Man X oh, character. Oh, Pokemon. Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. it's Are just you Bell sure you're not horny for it, it though? <laughs> I mean, look, <laughs> mine was female in the game, so I I, I abstain. I All right, fair enough. Well, this character looks cool. Yeah. All right. I'm having like a quarter of life crisis. I think Sewer Ledge might be my favorite Pokemon, but it's recency bias. It might be too, sure. too early a call. I, I believe in you. You could deal with this. You can figure out these feelings, Thank man. Thank you, Jeff. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Uh, Mike, I'm ready whenever you are. All right, we'll bring us right back in. All right, all right. And we are back. Jeff, what is up with these super chats? Yeah, I got them right here. Let me actually just make this window a little bit wider so a little bit easier to read. Let's start here with Nintenderic. Pokemon Legends Z is very exciting. X and Y have always been my favorite. What Pokemon would you like to see a new Mega Evolution for? Um, that's a that's a good question. I know I kind of shit on the Mega Evolutions, but that's just mechanically. I think that they look cool enough. I like to see um, so I like Cubone a lot, and um, uh, Mar Mar Marowak. That's the evolution. It's been so long. Uh, it's fine, but I'd like to see like a, a another tier of that. I think like a Super Marowak could be really fun. Just add bones everywhere. Just so many bones. Hell yeah, we'll love bones. Um, I don't know. I don't know which ones have Mega Evolutions already. So I'll just say Snorlax because that's. My go-to Pokemon. He's my spirit animal. I think he got Gigantamax, but I don't know if he actually had a Mega Evolution. That's uh, that's uh, bigoted towards fat right there. Oh, he can only have a Gigantamax because he's big. Uh, big yeah, Jimbo Ryan says, shout out to that Walmart in Wisconsin that accidentally marked my order as not picked up and gave me a free PS5 two years ago. Bought oh, so wow. many accessories. Hell yeah, Jim Ryan. Although I think that's why your company's losing money or not making as much money as they want. Because of that Walmart oh in Wisconsin. I don't know. He visited a, a Walmart. Did he like make the staff take a picture with him and then lay them all off five <laughs> days later? Uh, yeah, probably. It is Jim Ryan after all. Uh, all right. Let's go with KB Esquire, who dropped a, dropped a fat $50. Thank you so much, KB oh, wow. Esquire. Thank you. Uh, I have a question. So I figured I would ask some experts. They weren't available. So I'm asking this question here. <laughs> I love RPGs, but do not understand SMT. Persona is a spinoff of SMT, but is it SMT itself a spinoff? And where is Digital Devil Saga? You know, I did. I listened to a video about the history of the Shimagami Tensei series, and I don't really remember this answer. I know that like they started. I do. Shimagami Tensei I, is a spinoff, though, right? Yeah. So there's a okay. series of novels in Japan called mm -hmm. Megami Tensei, which then got adapted into NES They're not called games. That. They're called Tensei. They are. All right. Oh, I'm gonna meet myself. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> They're called Megami Tensei. Tensei, Sensei. And then uh yeah, then when they made the Super Nintendo version it had the shin put in front of it. That's just kind of a popular prefix in Neo. Japan for, Neo. Se yeah. for sequels. Yeah. So then you had Shin Megami Tensei for a while. And then there were spin-offs of that digital devil saga, it's just one of the spin-off series. And then so was Persona, but Persona kind of became more of its own thing than even a lot of the other SMT spinoffs did. Yep, that sounds right. And uh, there there are a ton of these games. Like, there's just way oh, more sure. than you're expecting uh, when you actually go back and look at all of them. Because uh, it's not just the numbered ones. And then there's, uh, they of course... They're pretty decent. Yeah, yeah. There's Devil Survivor. There, and there's, if. you know, the most famous game, Jack Brothers, for the Jack Virtual Bros. Boy. Yeah, with Jack Bros. Yeah. I'm glad that there's like a, one of like the special attacks against Persona 3 Reloaded. It's just called Jack Bros. That's fun. Uh, Connell Wood asks, uh, thanks again, KB, by the way. Connell Wood asks, these layoffs unforgiv unforgivable, fuck the shareholders. Um, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, so, Connell. Uh, yeah, those PlayStation layoffs did happen today. And again, e everybody's doing it, I know, but it is still just baffling that a company like Insomniac, which has done nothing but practically carry playstation on its back in a lot of ways lately still has to lay people off why we saw their ambitious release schedule while having to deal with that and you know they're canceling games we know that a twisted metal game is not happening anymore i i'm worried about things like that next ratchet and clank game right because we know ratchet Clank doesn't make a ton of money if something's gonna get cut over there just to make sure we can make more venom and spider-man stuff um yeah it's bleak it's not good 
Yeah, it, it was like part of the reporting was like it was several games. Do we know how many games were canceled? I don't think we know exactly. Yeah, it's a, it's a, I, I bet a few a handful of those are probably those live service games. We, we know at least one of the projects well, that was frozen. Twisted Metal was, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then um, the, the Last of Us Factions thing, uh, that's, that was right. put on hold as well. Uh, but yeah, fuck the shareholders. Bill Kehoe says it's Kehoe, Kehoe, Mike. Okay, well, uh, yeah, there we go. Kehoe. Uh, I'm, a 40, Kehoe. I'm a 47-year-old man-child that has a hankering to play a Pokemon game. In my days, I've only beaten Blue and Diamond. Which mainline Pokemon game should I play next? Black uh, and White. Black and White, very good. And also, kind of from that same time frame, uh, Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Uh, fantastic. So those are all DS games. Uh, let's see here. RT Bick says, I linked my Golden Sun save to Lost Age, which meant typing a 260 character password on my Switch. What's wow. the worst hoop you've jumped through for a game? Uh, I re when I started playing Dragon Quest VIII on the 3DS, I was really disheartened to learn that the Japanese version of Dragon Quest VIII on the 3DS had orchestrated music. Oh yeah, this the one. US one did not. And Dragon Quest music just sounds so much better orchestrated to me than with the beeps and bloops. So that's that's when I learned how to uh, hack my 3DS. <laughs> Which, again, not very hard, but still for me, it was a lot. To so be I clear, not to play pirated games is a game you own. I have not put a single pirated game on there. I did that whole thing. It's like that guy from put... Breakfast Club that gets a fake ID so he can vote. That's who we're dealing with, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I did all that just so I could get the orchestrated music in there, and it was worth it. <laughs> <laughs> That's for me, not for him. He's innocent. Uh, yeah. all right, let's see here. Oh, I, I went to the library and printed out, um, oh, no, I didn't print out. I found they had a copy of a PC game that had the, uh, little, like, slider thing that was their old version of the piracy control, so I could get the code so I could boot up a game that I did not have one of those for. Uh, all right, let's see. Chrono Rig says, hey, dogs, if they had a Pokemon Jeff and Pokemon Mike versions, in what inspired city would it take place in? Cleveland. Cleveland. Absolutely. That'd be incredible. <laughs> Just the Pokemon in Cleveland. <laughs> Pokemon Legends Cleveland. <laughs> Pokemon Legends Cleveland. Uh, oh, that'd be great. It's it's overdue, frankly. It should have happened by now. Yep. Uh, El Grug says, if Mike beats Mythologies this week, I'll give him more simp money. Also, were the oh, F-Zero yeah. GX HD rumors just, just F-Zero 99 in the end? Uh, Probably? I don't know. I don't know for sure, but probably. Um, yeah, you can maybe see a world where people knew something of zero was happening and I don't know, maybe he assumed it would be GX for some reason. Uh, I hope that did well. I hope that that isn't like the only F zero game we get for another eight years or something. God, that game is so good. Uh, our yep. buddy, our truth is here. Uh, thanks for showing up. Truth. Hi. Uh, hey, Tim and Greg, what's up? <laughs> I've been a fan of your trivia show. Kind of funny game showdown since I was a kid. I love this character. <laughs> I'm sorry. I love our truth. Uh, this is my favorite new one. This is so good. Our truth, you're the best. Yeah. Uh, hey, Greg, remember that time we uh, we we revealed the release date for Final Fantasy 15, but the release date leaked earlier that day. Good yeah, times. Yeah. Hey, at least we hey, we still got paid. Am I right? Am I right? I think, or am I right? I, I, I think about that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> when the, this weird three like this three hour stage show that they hosted, and like the whole time there was some giant button that they were supposed to push at the end to reveal the release date, but it leaked like two hours before that. And it got delayed, didn't it? And it got didn't delayed. It got <laughs> <laughs> yes, I love because in that reveal they do a, like a countdown that is going up and down in the in the date. And the, the farthest date in, for the in time was the actual date that the game came out before wow. like going back into the oh, date really? they announced. That's really yeah, funny yeah. actually. That's <laughs> really funny, that's right? amazing. Uh all right, Hemoglobin or Hemogoblin, excuse me, says, Have you all played Penny's Big Breakaway yet? I really enjoyed yes. it. Kind of Mario hat mechanics mixed mixed with good 3D Sonic could be good GB race content. Not a bad idea. I need to like really spend some time with it. I started it and enjoyed what I played, and I'm ready to play more. Yeah, I think it's very good. I, I uh, yeah, I, I haven't played a whole ton. I played kind of the first three levels, and I really dug it. Really enjoy it. Would be happy to uh, get more time with it for sure. Uh, Willow Davis says, "Is the Mario Galaxy intro Mar M Mushroom Kingdoms 911?" Uh, yes. 
I mean, yeah, that's pretty tragedy. terrifying <laughs> when you think about it. Right, so it's that's like all the stars intro. like crashing into their their stuff. Is that what happens at the beginning of Mario Galaxy? Oh well, they, he he. Remember, he like uproots the entire castle, right? And okay, takes it away. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. very dramatic. Yeah, I mean, if 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 like all these uh giant enemy flying ships came in, where sh- I think they sh- fire cannons everywhere, and then also just steal the entire castle with the ruling royal. Yeah, that'd be a pretty bad day. Uh, a second goob coupling has hit the tower. Oh, well, you stole my oh, joke. Oh, God damn it. <laughs> uh, Eden says, I don't think we talked about this on the sides. What are your thoughts on Tifa's materials, her gold saucers, her stats, her world maps, her attributes? Um, I think she's a great character. This is Tifa's year. Yeah, we are. We it is Tifa's year, and we are all just living in it. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to it. I was always like from a distance in like back then. I was like, yeah, no, Tifa seems great. Uh, e- even like beyond like being like a, a impressionable young boy, it was still like, no, Tifa's just a cool character, and I'm glad that uh, it feels like that's not been abandoned and like she's being put in the background. It's like, no, she seems like the star of this game. Yeah, uh, she's very important. In it. Chrono Rig says, hey, dogs, take two said they want to release GTA six in the next fiscal year. And Nintendo Switch two rumors is also the first half of next year. How crazy would that be if both launch near each other? I suppose that actually is possible and could be really wild, but we'll see. Yeah, it'd be great. We'll have this great quarter only so that like the next year people be like, did it make as much money as uh-huh. we did this time last year? It will be like, no shit. <laughs> yep. Get out of here. Yep. Oh boy. Uh, T Bucket 23 says, I beat Blast Core this Saturday. It's got some N64 nice. jank, but it's still a really fun and unique action puzzle game. Great rareware title. Yeah, absolutely. It's uh you're gonna pick it up and be like, this is funky. And then once you get like the feel for it, there's something like really magical there. It's a good game. Yeah, I still want to go play it. Jacob Bench says, playing Bowser's Fury to keep me busy until Final Fantasy VII. It's wild that they just made one of the best Mario games and put it in one of the best Mario games. Uh, yeah. Bowser's Fury rules. That's it, it really is a good game. Yeah, that's uh, an incredible package where you get just an improved version of 3D World, which is actually, yes, one of the best uh, Mario games. And yeah, Bowser's Fury itself as this concept of a real open world Mario. It's super fun. It rules. Gosh, I like 3D Mario a lot. Uh, I mean, th- that is kind of like the other. That's like the bigger bummer to me. For some reason, I'm almost more patient about the Switch too. It's like I guess I can wait. But knowing that maybe I was gonna play a new 3D Mario this year, and now I gotta wait. And uh, you know, also hurts that I drafted it in one of my fantasy yeah, critic sure. leagues. <laughs> yes, definitely. But man, I uh, uh, I just I'm so ready. It's been a while. I'm ready. I'm glad. I'm kind of glad that I'm mostly glad that we don't know about it because it would hurt a lot more if, if they announced it and then things got delayed. I'm glad they're in a position where it's like, no, we weren't even going to announce it yet, but we're going to delay it first right. before that. So it's a little bit it, easier to take. We, we didn't talk about it. There was like another report about it being delayed okay, in 2025. Yeah. It seems like that's certainly happening this time. And it that was, was about shoring up supply yes. so that there's not like a scalper issue. So there's still going to be a scalper hey, I got, issue. I mean, even they have like 10 million of those. Issue. Yeah, it's going to be bad. I have a question for you, actually, because I was thinking about this. Um, and, and no, I, I do not hate Mario Sunshine. I like Mario Sunshine. But is the GameCube the only, like, major Nintendo hardware, maybe aside from some of the uh, handhelds, at least the home consoles, where the mainline Mario game isn't one of the top five games for the system? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's right? gotta be, It's right? gotta be, yeah. Because um, interesting. Mario Brothers 3, for sure. Uh, Mario World, uh, for sure. Yeah. Uh, Super Mario 64, 64 sure. obviously, yes. And then Galaxy, uh, games. Galaxy games. So, yes, both of them. World and Odyssey. So. Uh huh. Yep. There it is. Yeah, it's yeah. definitely the case. Huh. Fair yeah. enough. And then I think it, it falls it falls apart for the portables, obviously. Like, I, even right. even though Mario Land 2 may probably is a top five Game Boy game, I could see people saying it isn't. And then. Yeah, it's like uh, arguable. Game, yeah. Game Boy Advance didn't have it, a bespoke mainline Mario game. It just had ports. Uh, neither did. I mean, the DS had the new Super Mario Bros. game, which is an amazing 3DS Super Mario Land, which or Super Mario 3D Land, which I like. I like a lot. I don't, actually, know, if it's yeah. a, I don't know if it's a top five it 3DS be tough. game, though. It'd be tough. Yeah. Uh, but it's still uh, that game they should um, do an HD version of. And I'd, they'd have to like spruce it up because there are like HD uh, 
uh, like videos of that that people played on an emulator and they up like upresed it and it's like the game looks barren when you don't have like yeah. the fuzzy 3d screen that you're looking at it through. you would have to do because there were actual puzzles of that really depended on the 3d stuff from what i remember yeah, so I think the way they, they they like solved that when they had the 2ds is i think like if you flick something you would basically just like flick the screen so you could like see I oh, see oh there's a, a an actually an object there and that that would work uh, let's see here. Adam GC says, who in their right mind sets out to make 12 live service games? Yeah, I mean, it does seem like a lot. I don't know. Uh, I guess at a certain point, if you're going to commit to something, you, you maybe have to go really commit to it, but I don't know. But, I mean, the, I, 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 I thought the thinking was, well, because maybe some of them will hit. Well, like one of the first ones of those came out yep. and it's hitting better than anyone could imagine with Helldivers 2, right? It's a giant hit. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It didn't change anything. It's not like they yeah. saw that. It's like, wow, I guess maybe we don't have to lay off as many people as we were going to. They never thought that for a second. Yeah, that's a good point. Because it's like, are we really expecting one of these live service games to do better than Helldivers 2? And if, if, if that's what's needed to, to stop this stuff, it's like, that's unreasonable. That's completely absurd. Yeah. So you're right. It really doesn't change the calculus at all. And that's like actually maybe a little bit more depressing. Um, Inufe says, what is your go-to beer to drink all day? For me, it's Bud Light Lime. Also, what Nintendo character would you like to, to, to day drink with? Um... My favorite domestic used to be Miller Lite for a long time. Now, like, you know, I'm not drinking a ton of beer, really, despite what people might think. So if I am drinking beer a lot of time, it is going to be something kind of more yeah. craft beer-esque, to be honest. But there's a local brewery here that makes a sort of domestic, domestic-ish called um, Penguin City. So I'll get that and maybe, you know, like support the local brewery a little bit more. Um, just um, Coors, just normal Coors, Coors Banquet Beer has been kind of refreshing lately, actually, so... I've been drinking more of that than usual. I like uh, like a Coors, like a Coors Light. Um, I will Gosh. usually these days. I'll just order a Gay Bud Light. That's what I go for. Yeah. Give, give me the Gay Bud Light. Um, uh, or a Pabst Blue Ribbon. That was that's actually always been my go to. Heineken, uh, fuck that shit. I like Pabst he Blue Ribbon. I like Heineken too. Uh, but PBR. That's actually the one I'll go with. Uh, PBR was such a specific time and place for me. I think you missed a Big Fresh thirty seven sending a super chat that just said play Captain Toad. I did. Let's go ahead and... They really want us to play Captain Toad. I, I, it'll Did happen you... eventually if you keep giving us money. I'm going to feel guilty. Like, that's how most yeah. things get it's, done for it's me. It's working. Yes. Did uh, you get Ally Miracles above that? Uh, no. Uh, Ally Miracles says Pokemon Legends Backwards Arizona. Because Z-A-A-Z. -A -A -Z. I, oh. I can tell you who wouldn't get that joke. Janicho. He doesn't know the state abbreviations. Doesn't He just knows California. He doesn't know any of the rest. You know, me neither. He, I bet he could guess Ohio's. <laughs> Yeah, this maybe. It's pretty easy. He's um, OH? That's yeah. right. IO. Oh, wow. Uh, the, un the only person who got what you just did there, Mike, is me. Uh, the Uncharted Wolf says Rebirth question for Mike. Will I be forced to play as a certain party member sometimes? I just want to run with Cloud, Aerith, and Red 13. Okay, no, okay, they're... okay. Real quick, there you need some context for this one. The Uncharted Wolf is on a war path against Tifa. He must be silenced and destroyed. Oh, no. What did Tifa sorry, ever do? Go ahead. Yeah, right. Look at her. Great. Uh yes, there are story segments where you play as specific characters. Um, so no, you can't just play as those three specific people all the time. There's even moments where you play like as a team without Cloud, like have a different leader. I like that. I like kind of being forced to use a bunch of different people. So uh, I don't know. I think you'll like it fine. But no, don't go into that mindset that you can play the whole game with a set three people. Yeah, you got to use a growth mindset. Right. And sometimes like the team like splits up in a specific way and you'll like kind of play as the, these three people and then you'll check back in with the other three stuff like that. Oh, but there are lots of times where especially when you're doing all the open world stuff, there are plenty of times where you use your picked party. Oh, uh, hey, that boy Jerry just dropped a super chat. Give us a ranking of Final Fantasy Waifu's podcast. Oh, we'll, my God. We'll, we'll get around to doing wild shit like that at some point again. That's a 12 hour stream. <laughs> That'd be interesting, man. How do yeah, people feel about lightning these the days? Because is lightning still a it little rules. bit of a poochie or she got over that? Because, I mean, they, they pushed lightning very hard. I don't blame people for being a little kind of annoyed and off put by it. But Wait, I was like, do you 
did you didn't you like it when she was selling you Louis Vuitton shit? Louis Vuitton. All the time? Just, that's what I think of. That's that's what I think of. Like it's like the second thing I picture when I think of Lightning is that she had a Louis Vuitton commercial. That's right. I I, I remember yeah. that. That was wild. Um. All right. That does it for the super chats, Mike. Back to you. Hey, thank you so much, everybody. We will read any more super chats that do come in before the end of the show, but we're gonna take another break real quick and then we will get back we're going to talk about some nintendo ds hidden gems what is that down there what it's a stick i think okay no. that's a, let's go that's an over the shoulder boulder holder <laughs> i've been, been well, thinking about that ever since you, you said that i've been repeat. giggling i learned that yeah. i heard that just recently on a YouTube cooking shows. <laughs> so, so I was very tickled by that phrase. It's definitely like, a phrase funny. I've heard before, but like I had not heard it in a long time. So when you said that, it just went like <laughs> funny. Yeah, you know, last time I heard that phrase from my dad. <laughs> Christ, <laughs> this cookie guy is very old. Like, Eighty old right, more phrases. I can say, oh. Jeff, I didn't realize you had a cooking channel. Uh-huh. <laughs> Uh, all right, man. I need to get to the doctor and get some antibiotics for this. It's just like you just but, need to get to the doctor, dude. Yeah, I know. I just just help. Well, the last time I went, you he didn't help me with anything. I need to go talk to someone that, like actually is gonna help. Uh, mm. Oh, he's not scrolling. That's lame. All right. Mm, okay. He's I said scrolling, not crawling. Shut up, Christian. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> You're a still dumbass. Mike's bit. What are you doing? <laughs> You're a fucking idiot. <laughs> What'd you do? What'd you steal from me? Uh, I sang. Uh, oh, how dare you? Singing Lincoln Park. How dare you singing? Well, he said, scroll- he said scrolling, and it sounded like crawling to me because he's got that oh, accent. Oh, you're making you fun know? of my accent now? Yes, he's is got that accent. Uh, wow. Oh, sweet. They're going to send me another play date because I lost and broke mine. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> nice. oh, oh, you piece of shit. Jeff, <laughs> you son you're of a an bitch. idiot. <laughs> you're Holy shit. I, I, moved. I moved across the country and I lost it. My move. You now, notice, I, in nowhere in my defense did I say I'm not an idiot. I want to make it clear. I'm not arguing fair, that point. Very fair. You know very fair. I, okay. I also giggle at the fact that you one day are going to die. <laughs> <laughs> fair. You're right. Hey, yeah, the turnabout is fair play. Uh, all right, let's get back into it, Mike, whenever you're ready. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you good? Yo, my, Are we good? I'm trying, what is my Nintendo DS in it, Jim? Oh, yeah. <laughs> you need a second? Uh, Just a, I, I mean, think, I guess I know what I The worst thing say. about using Edge is that I've never changed off the, like, Microsoft Start, like, uh, homepage. And so sometimes I'll get uh, like the news stories and I'll be like, here's just like the craziest shit you've ever seen. Cause it's meant to try to get old people to click. And then sometimes I'll be like, here's Sydney Sweeney. Am I right? Hubba hubba. I'm like, okay, I don't need this. Everybody's Microsoft. crazy for that lady. And I'm Sid- like, oh. I like Sydney Sweeney's. Yes. All right. Let's get here. All right. Uh, I'm ready to go. I am ready to. All right, Jeff, we're back. We're talking uh, Nintendo DS Hidden Gems. We've been working our way through these Nintendo consoles. This is a weird one to me just because, like, for the DS, like, all of the best games for it, to me, are games that are kind of, like, hidden gems. It, it's like the Nintendo console where, to me, the Nintendo games matter almost the least for me. Like, a lot of them, I don't even like very much. Like, the Zelda games for it, yeah. meh, the Mario games for it, eh, mm. but, like, all this weird shit made by other companies uh that's what i'm actually here for in a lot of ways uh it's like like to me the hidden gems they aren't very hidden to me because they're the games that i think about like henry hatsworth and the puzzling adventure would be a good one i imagine not a lot of people really played um but again i feel like i feel like on more than any other console the hidden gems quote unquote get talked about a lot hotel dusk room 215 ghost trick phantom detective world ends with you right like stuff like that yeah you should know about it if you don't yeah, I'm like, because like I'm I'm struggling too, because like that's what, like the zone that I'm in where it's like all the games I think at first like we talk about them so much that they like right. don't qualify as hidden gems anymore. So I'm like trying to like think of something that might be a little bit deeper here. Um, right, like Metroid Prime Pinball, I guess. Like that, even like the ten games I do like 
is there weirder shit like Metroid Prime Pinball and Elite Beat Agents? Right, Elite Beat Agents. Uh, like, yeah, like I guess technically that's still one that most people don't know about, but clearly everyone listening here almost certainly does at this point. Um, I, I, I mean, really the the one that I I think that is uh one that we've also talked about a lot is that oh God, now what's the name? The uh the collection of board games, uh, the one that came out on the Switch as well. Oh. Uh, Right. Uh, God, now I can't remember it. What yeah. it's called either. I mean, uh, Clubhouse, games. Way more than Clubhouse games. Thank Clubhouse you. Clubhouse games. Thank you. Yeah, the the DS version is actually really, really good, and it's got um a slightly different selection than the Switch one because they're like so much of it was touchscreen, and they knew you'd have the touchscreen all the time. So you have like the the touchscreen darts and stuff, and it actually felt really good where you will flick it and stuff. And all those games were really well made. Uh, and it had like online, and it was it worked really well, and it was just it was just a really solid collection. Uh, and one that I had a ton of fun playing through, even when I wasn't playing online, I played through all those games by myself. I learned how to play backgammon. I forgot how to play backgammon, but at the time I learned. And it was, uh, yeah, it's just it's a really solid uh, 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 like piece that they put together where it's like everything works really well. I, there's a couple of games I expect to see that I never actually got to play, but one, two. Remember Moon? Like they yeah. made a first person shooter for the DS oh, that people like. I like I like Moon. Uh, what's the uh, the horror one that takes place? Dementium. In the hospital? Yeah, Dementia. The, the Ward. Ward. Yes. Same thing. I think yes. that's going to come up also. Both of those this are very like, good. This is the system for kind of rare, weird, hidden gems. I mean, that's why I love the DS. So yes. I guess I'm I'm mostly curious to see what our community does bring up here and suggest. God, I love the DS. It's a good system. How messed up was it when uh, Jan's significant other? When learning about a new Pokemon game, asked him if it was coming out on the DS. <laughs> it was. I was like legit shocked. I was like, oh, "Wow, <laughs> really?" She think that thinks that's possible. Wow. I guess it's does nice she, that like another she adult's to like jail living still. Yeah, <laughs> like someone's like living in, like that kind of world world where it's like, yeah, the DS is still a going concern, right? It's like, no, no, it's definitely not. I guess that was the same time as the Wii, and that's what Paul Riker thinks is still a going concern. Yeah, so. I guess so. Right. Yeah. yeah. Everyone was really living in those 2000s, I guess. Everyone's <laughs> still there in a lot of ways. All right. Uh, uh, I'm going to get the podcast thread up. Uh, do I read this or do you read these? You read these. Wait, no, I do. What am I talking about? <laughs> I read and then you scroll and match me, I guess. Yes, that's what I'll do. I'm getting it going. And no wonder you were confused about me not saying anything. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was like, I'll double check with him, but I'm pretty sure he reads these. No, I was like really in the mind of you're going to handle this. Don't worry. Um, t- <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, I just, I just, I just saw mine. Now I, I'll let, I'll let the podcast producer say it though. TV chunky twin chocobos says <laughs> it's Golden Sun, Dark Dawn. Uh, play Dark Dawn, Mike. Also, Spectrobes is great as my second call. I, I don't hear great things about Dark Dawn usually. Not that it's supposed to be terrible, but it's usually people's least favorite of the three. Um, but I don't know. I still may want to check it out someday. Uh, the Tekken with five. Excuse me, says the best Castlevania game nobody talks about, unfortunately. This is Castlevania Order of Ecclesia. Um, I, this is one I really want to go back and play, maybe more so than the other ones. It had a pretty cool soul capturing uh gimmick. One of the one of the best backs I've ever seen in a video game, right? Yeah, they worked I, really I, hard on that back. I like this character design a lot. Um, I love Order of Ecclesia. Um it was you know, at this time it was a Castlevania Metroidvania game. Every single year for the sixth year in a row, something like that. Um, yeah, rolled. And it was fantastic. And God, it was like a new, I'm like, yep, I can count another one of those coming out uh, this year. And I would play them immediately. I was so excited. I loved it. But at this point, it was like, yeah, the formula maybe is getting a little stale. I'm still not, I'm not going to complain or anything. So to get Order of Ecclesia and see, I'm um, a uh, hey, kind of mess with the formula a little bit and tr- try some new stuff and see that it's mostly very fun and mostly works was surprising and great. It's a really good game. Yeah, I would still be so happy if we got a collection of those three DS Castlevania games. They were fantastic. I, I hope they make it happen. Because mostly just to like preserve them on a sing, in a single screen format. That would be fantastic. B says, not exactly the most hidden, but still hidden slash niche. It's The World Ends With You. Man, I loved The World Ends With You. Uh, that game really hit for me. And again, funny because uh, the sequel, Neo, couldn't have cared less for uh-huh. it. This, uh, this original one, uh, that was good stuff. It, it it was a DS game that was really a DS game because it was doing this thing where you're actually controlling two battlefields at the same time. It just felt really neat. It had a unique style, right? All that Shibuya stuff. I, I liked that game quite a lot. Uh, you're right. The DS is just oops, all hidden gems. It really like every <laughs> it game, really it, every single good game for it is a hidden gem in some way. 
Bench JC says, Starfy fans rise up. Such a great game from my childhood. This is the legendary Starfy. I think this didn't even come out in North America. It is a Nintendo game, though. Uh, it, it's still in English because it came out in Europe, I think. Looks it's like got, a really it's fun got the game. ESRB thing on the logo here, so it's like... Maybe this is the only one we got, actually. Maybe that's right. Maybe, maybe it was a Blockbuster it. exclusive. It wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> that must be it. No, I think this. there are a bunch of Starfy games. Maybe this is the only one we got. That makes sense. something like that. Right. It's like, is it like Hamtaro? Did we ever get a single Hamtaro? I think we got the Hamtaro games. Maybe we I'm got all of them? Really? Know. Okay, wow. I don't know. Uh, Grand Theft Auto Chinatown Wars. Definitely, this is definitely one, one I considered. Yes, I love, I love Chinatown Wars. But it just feels like, yeah, that's a Grand Theft Auto game. What am I talking about? Pro- well, this is maybe the one Grand Theft Auto game you can get away with calling a hidden gem. Yes. Uh, Always Be Clothing has 999. I believe that's how we uh, say this here, right? Yep. I never actually got to play this game. Yeah. But I, no, I hear good things. Yeah, I know oh, people really great. like them. Is this, uh, is this stop- Danganronpa uh, adjacent or is that, am I thinking of something else? No. Okay. No. I'm thinking of something else. It's, they're, not, they're not related, but they're like of the same, like uh, visual novel, soul puzzle, soul Somatically mystery. Similar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 999, does that have like uh, like two sequels to it? Like that, yes, like, it has two. Yeah, it has okay. uh, a couple of sequels. The, the complete pack of all the games is called Zero the Nomadi Games. Okay. Right. Yes. You, Yes, yeah, so yeah, they're all on Steam and they're really good there. So probably check Tommy out. Pencil says there's something about the DS library that makes it feel like 60 percent of it is hidden gems. Yeah, well, here's one of them. This is Contact by Atlas. This is another one I do hear about a lot that I haven't gotten to play myself yet. I always wanted to play um, it because it reminded me of Fooly Cooly. I'm like, yeah, it looks like kind of like Fooly yeah. Cooly. Uh, oh, that. OK. I, oh, and I want to say I'm going to remember this. I'm going to see if anybody else has this, because I think I do have my actual hidden gem. I'm going to bring up here in a second. But uh, Bop Atro says, I once again ask everyone to play the best Pokemon spinoff game before Legends came out. This is Pokemon Conquest, the uh, tactics, that, I tactics believe. Tactics game, yep. I, yeah, I, I, I'll Pokemon go back game. and play this. Uh, I, I That would be fun, Bop. Tro, Bop. I'll just say Bop. Bop, uh, <laughs> I've, heard, I've heard a bunch of people say this is a good game, and I've, I've always meant to check it out. So now is the time. Phil Mac has Hotel Dusk 215 or Room 215. This is a visual novel, mostly with some kind of puzzle adventure game elements. This uh, this kind of at least became popular in the kind of online gaming circuit of its day. I think, Jeff, I know a lot of the podcasts we were listening to were talking about this one. This was a pretty neat game. Yeah. And I think like just the other day, like like Bacalar referenced this. And he's and like. It almost feels like, in a way, this is the DS's killer app. That's like how messed up yeah. that system is in some ways. And it had a sequel that we didn't get in the U.S. Right. Right. So, and it's not, yeah. and it's not Hotel Dusk Room Two Sixteen. Uh, it's got no. some other name, and I, I can never remember. Alex says we've gotten two Digimon story games in the decade and a half since this came out. I need them back. This is Digimon World Dawn and Digimon World Dusk. I wonder if these are good. I liked Digimon so intensely for like a two year period of my life that and it's been so long since I've really taken in any Digimon content since then. I don't know what it would do to me if I suddenly played a Digimon game now. Uh, Nick Turbo says the game I got with my DS. This is my Sims. Oh, my goodness. This is a Sims game for the DS. I have no idea what this would even be like. It's like uh, if all the Sims were avatar characters five years before people really invented all those avatar characters look <laughs> yep. at this art style yeah they made a bunch of these like my sims and like sims spinoffs for the ds uh big bang mini is from adam juice here is this like a fan is this like a fantasia like not fantasian jeff but uh, well thank you for clarifying this- they're two different things looks like you're using the stylus to set off fireworks it looks kind of fun oh wow big that'd be mini w- we have, what Fantavision, right? That's what you said. Yeah, man, that's, that's what I meant. Fan, I said Fantasia. That's Disney. Uh, yeah, Fantavision. Fantavision right. Man, I didn't. It really does look like that. That's wild, huh? Okay, fair enough. Haas says this seems so cool at the time. Guitar Hero on tour. This actually was pretty neat. It was this wild thing where you plug in the kind of guitar controller in the Game Boy Advance slot, mm-hmm. and it worked pretty well, actually. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, guitar Hero on tour was a lot of fun. I never tried this, but I do imagine that it probably would hurt your hand. Well, it's more comfortable than you would think. It it, it worked. I, I want to uh, try it. Oh, Pablo Costa says the OG Nino Kune game, Dominion of the Dark Jin. Right. So we didn't get this Nino Kune I in the know West. This existed. Yeah, and it's it they they did it a few times with some games. Uh, like I, I know Dragon Quest Eleven. Also had like a, a portable game version that's like the same game but just on a portable with different graphics. 
So we only ever got the PS3 version of this instead, which, I, you know, that's the one I would rather have. But still, I am curious about this DS game. Uh, the Peen Cuisine Dream has Advance Wars Dual Strike. All right, Mr. Advance Wars, what do you think about that one? Uh, it is one that I have more fondness for now than I did at the time. I was, uh, I remember, like, playing it being like, oh, I miss kind of the old character designs, and they're maybe going a little bit, um, uh, they're trying to go somewhere between the first Advance Wars, the first one that we got, and, and then the second, or not the second one, but the one that was, like, very grim, um, and now when I go back and play this, I'm like, oh, no, this is actually a very solid Advance Wars game, a very good game from top to bottom. Uh, Jamie H1224 has a uh, Castlevania Portrait of Ruin. I know you just said a lot of good things about Order of Ecclesia. What do you think of Portrait of Ruin? Portrait of Ruin is still a good game. All of these Castlevania games are good, and they're, they're, they are standouts in the genre. Uh, but, uh, man, look at this cover art compared to Order of Ecclesia. Yeah, yeah. I was about, yeah. the cover wow. art doesn't make them justice to the actual video game because I remember the video game looking like good. Yes, the, ga the, game, is, the game itself looks pretty good. It, it is maybe the more run-of-the-mill Castlevania on the DS. Cool, with this and Dawn of Sorrows, like that was they kind of controversially changed the art style to be this sort of very clean anime look, and it was very, it was weird. Those games are still very good, but uh, like the character portraits in Dawn of Sorrows, remember, looking way worse than they do in Arya of right. Sorrow they, because they, of that. N neither of those games have as much a style as Order of Ecclesia. Dr. Ryan says, Puzzle Quest is the first game I can remember to take the match three puzzle and make it into something much bigger. No Puzzle and Dragons without Puzzle Quest. I actually played a lot of Puzzle Quest on my PSP. That's where I was playing that one, actually. But yeah, that was a... That was a fun franchise, especially at that time. Pretty early on in the whole, we can do some weird stuff with Match 3 Puzzle Games. And because of this, we eventually get Honey Pop. <laughs> so one of the most important games ever made. Absolutely. Yes. I, I never had a Puzzle Quest phase. I, it's one of I'm always... I do think about it sometimes. I'm like, I should go play Puzzle Quest for the DS. Uh, I remember seeing it on the 1UP show and all of them being so in love with it. And be like, oh, I would probably like this. And I never even really tried it. So I, I never got into it. Uh, and then over here from Vision 49 says, Breaking the rules is once going for two. You want to play a beat em up, a fighting game, an RPG, or a rhythm game? Oh, you want all those at once and look no further than Draglade. I never, yeah, I never played Draglade. I've never played Atlas, Draglade, but this other one actually is maybe my real hidden gem. Also, Age of Empires, Age of Kings rules. It's basically just advanced wars with a more complex economy and a tech tree. I did always hear good things about this game. Yeah, this is a turn based tactics game, uh, Age of Empires, the Age of Kings, and it is fantastic it's good i played this game non-stop for maybe like a two-year period playing as all the different like uh civilizations you could play as it was great kind of on a similar page i remember the version of civilization revolution that came out for the ds was also very and good. i played a ton of that but, as well yeah that was a, just a really good system for tactics and strategy yeah uh chaos buckaroo says trauma center under the knife yeah, oh, I yeah. remember like we got this Phoenix Wright at like similar times. It was just really fun to get these kind of dramatic anime interpretations of real jobs. Uh -huh. It was good times. Shoji Ko says Hotel Test was already mentioned above, so I'll just uh, instead recommend Elite Beat Agents. There's Elite Beat Agents. Once again, like, yeah, you're probably right. Like, not like how many people yep. play Elite Beat Agents really, but it's to not, me, it's not a Pokemon game, right? Like, like that's what the yeah. DS is. It's it's Pokemon Mario Zelda, and the, you know, we could talk about the quality of the Mario and Zelda games, whatever. But it's like most people bought it for those things. And then there are a thousand of these games led by Elite Beat Agents. Joy Z says, Arnold mentioned all the games that had a DS acronym subtitle. It was a dumb bit, but I like it. Also, crosswords. With, with the, the DS, DS. At the end there. Very good. Well, here's all of them. Okay. That's interesting. I know what my favorite is, but uh, wow. I'm going to list all these. Actually, this is fun. All the games that had DS Acronym subtitles. Advanced Wars Dual Strike. Castlevania Dawn of Sorrow. Shimagami Tensei. Devil Survivor. Uh, Tensei, excuse me. Resident Evil Deadly Science, Silence. That, oh, Deadly Silence is fun. That's a, It's kind of a port of the PlayStation 1 version of that game. Oh, really? So it's kind of just neat. Yeah, it's very much based on that version of the game. They have some like, touchscreen stuff in there. I actually still really want to play it. Um, Mr. Driller, Drill Spirits, Peggle, Dual Shot, even Peggle got in on Peggle it. Peggle is really, Tenchu, that is really good on the DS. Yeah, Tenchu, Dark Secret, there's a Tenchu game, I okay. I did not know that, and I really want to play it now. <laughs> Full Metal Alchemist, Dual Sympath uh, Sympathy, uh, Lunar Dragon Song, Dig Dug, Digging Strike, Ninja <laughs> Guided Dragon Sword, that's the one I think about. That game was very good, that could be. And that's like a mostly gem. a touchscreen game, right? Yeah, it was like a full touchscreen game. 
but it still actually felt really good. It is, like, yeah, like, it still felt like that Xbox action game. Ninja Gaiden and Dragon Sword was a lot of fun. Bleach Dark Souls, Guilty Gear, Dust Strikers, Godzo Unleashed, Double Smash, <laughs> Super Black Bass, Dynamic Shot. Uh, is it Bass or Bass? I don't know. Is it a rhythm game or is it a fishing it's game? Got, it's a sure. fishing game because it's Black Bass. That, that rules out a, a fishing game, did it, too? It does rule. Love that. <laughs> Uh, bubble bobble double shot. Is that the second double shot? Or I, I was just thinking? gonna see, uh, there was dual shot earlier. I was just gonna okay. say, like, at a certain point, like, you're gonna run out of these because, like, there's yeah. only so many unique ones you could do. And then Mage Knight Destiny's Soldier. <laughs> that is, I, I kind of like that we're getting that back a little bit with all these remakes doing re something, right? Uh, we yeah, remind, I mean, rebirth. I mean, you know, that this is a tradition goes back to the Super Nintendo, right? Every game having Super before it, and then N64, everything yeah. having 64 in it. But that, which, which really put Super C in an awkward place yes, on the that, NES. It definitely did. Now, it, But it's like, that's less fun because then we don't get these opportunities for them to like use it as an initialisms. It's like, and now we're going to decide what the DNS stand for. That's a lot more fun. Riz Racer says Robert <laughs> Belmart goes Liam Neeson slash taken minus the racism on a castle of creatures to get his son back. Man, this is called Barnyard Blast. I, you play as a swine of the pig? night. Wow. I have no idea about this game, but it kind of looks amazing. Yes. I mean, we should have a DS stream. We could just, man, like I'm looking at this now. I'm like, I could just be a DS content creator for yeah, the rest of my life. That'd be fun. Uh, and then over here we got Beef this, Hammer with this is the other freshly one. picked yeah. Tingles, Rosie, Rupee Lit. It's so it's it's such a shame we didn't get this game in the West or, yeah. or at least in the U.S. We yeah, they, they released it in English localization like, what the hell? in England. Yeah, it's uh, that's just so bizarre. Thank God it's not like that I, anymore. Right, this is at a time where they were like Americans can't handle this freak because of homophobia, and it's like, oh come on, don't be so just weird. Just do it. Just release It'll be it. Fine. Yeah, and it, it would have been fine. This game is actually super interesting. It's got um, yeah. the base mechanic is you got to go buy things from people, but they don't tell you how much it costs. And if you don't give them enough money, they just take your money and they don't give you the thing. So you got to overpay. But if you overpay too much, then you're paying way too much and then you feel like a rube. And so it's like this game where you got to like, you know, poke and prod at the systems to figure out how to get all the things you need to actually complete the, complete the quest. Uh, and it's, I don't know, it's just super interesting. I, I really like this game. Eva Janice says, sad that the demo for Contra and Switch in port, but this was great. It's Contra 4. I haven't played that demo yet. I was always a little worried about it because it never looked very good despite being way forward. But um, Contra 4 actually did rule on the DS. I remember this yeah. being kind of a surprise when it came. Because it, it, it took them a while to make a Contra game that was much good. There was a few in there. But clearly that franchise was past its prime for a long time. But here was just a, a new, really fun 2D Contra game. It was good stuff. Uh, I like this game a lot. <sighs> yeah, I kind of want to play. And that, it was way forward to make Contra 4. I had to check that. So it's, really? it's weird to me. Yeah, like I was pretty sure it was. I double checked. Yeah, way forward made Contra 4, which is just a better looking game than this new one. It may huh. be more fun. I don't know. I haven't played the demo for the I new tried Contra the demo. Yet. I was not inspired. Interesting. It's weird. I don't know what's going on over there. Mr. Boar says it's a good if it's good enough for Sir Anthony Hopkins, it's good enough for me. It's my stop smoking coach with uh Alan Carr <laughs> by <laughs> Ubisoft. Man, Ubisoft there had were, a was... wild time with the DS and the Wii. Yeah, there were just a lot of like apps you get in the DS. You yeah, well, I, I legit, I legit used it. a cooking, uh, uh, like a recipe book uh, on the DS to make dinner a couple of times. I like actually did that. It was a different time, everybody. This was before smartphones, so like yeah. back then it made total sense to open up your DS. And then it had a microphone, so you could like yell, "All right, next step." And so you know, if you had dirty hands, it would like read the next step to you or like show it on the screen. It's like low res. It was a terrible way to do it, but it actually it worked. I had a fine time with it. Now I didn't need a stop smoking coach, but yeah, there was a lot of weird apps that they would sell you for thirty dollars at the time. Lenny Cool Dick Dever says, "Eat shit, Lumines, and its medias." Boy, do I agree. Yep, co-signed Mike <laughs> Naughty, and there's even a Disney medias. Medias, Disney, and Magic. Medias is fun. I like medias. I like medias too. I like medias way more than Lumines as well. I do. I do. Uh, Octo says this should have been the first response. It's Pick Cross 
3D. <laughs> I know you're a Pit Cross freak. Oh, yeah, and Pit Cross 3D is fantastic. He, I like uh, that this box art says at the top, this game fucking ruled. <laughs> yeah, right. You uh, added that on Pit, it. Pit Cross 3D is fantastic. I want to go back and play it all the time. I think Dan said he just went back and started playing Pit Cross 3D in the last week. Oh, wow. So uh, I, ad- I adore this game. It is really good stuff. It's like if you like good little brain teaser puzzle games, uh, it doesn't really get better than Pit Cross 3D. Hammond of Texas says Fossil Fighters, a wacky, wacky Pokemon S game that puts you on an adventure, exploring different regions, speaking to NPCs, fighting dinosaurs, and completing fun puzzles, including digging up and cleaning fossils, hammers, drills, and using the microphone on the DS to blow away dust particles. It was on to say the story's batshit insane. You fight a giant space monster who wants to eat the earth. Uh man, I, of all the Pokemon S games, this one is the one that would appeal to me. For one, I I like I like uh the idea of like digging for fossils and brushing off the dirt. Yeah. That's just something Using that the obviously makes to do that. Yep. Yeah, it makes a lot of sense on the stylus. I could see that being a ton of fun. So I, I bet I'd have fun if I had to play Fossil Fighters even today. Oh no. Uh Wonka says it's Russell Grant's astrology. Just look <laughs> at this. This is real, huh? Look um, at this guy. We should this is this is another stream. We should sort of like stream all of these apps and stuff. I remember I'm, Giant Bomb did that a while back with, um, I think it was the CDI, where they streamed a bunch of the weird app, DVD, or CD g- games that you could get. And it was like, here's how to play golf and stuff like that. And we should right. do that with the DS. Man, uh, Gerber what says, you- Monst- Sorry, Christian. No, what do you, I, was, I want to ask you if, what do you think of this game is like gameplay wise? Or like, what do you think? You're I, doing I think this you, game? I, you just like put in the date. Or it, it like can keep track of the date, so I think you just tell them your sign, and then they give you some updates for oh. each day of the year. Yeah, they probably just have like different like reading set for the whole year, and I don't, I don't know. Yep, I cool. can imagine. Gerber says Monster Tail, the game that Henry Hatsworth does made for Majesco before going on to make Epic Mickey Power of Illusion for Big Evil. They those people made Power of Illusion. I mean, that's good spoilers when we do three. Yes, Power of Illusion is going to be my answer for that. Awesome. God, okay, those people rule. Uh, Monster Tail isn't at all out of place in such lofty company. Nails dual screen gameplay. Okay, so that's interesting. I do not know much about Monster Tail, but if it's made either. by the Henry Hatsworth people, I need and to check it out. And if it's published by Majesco, then it's got to be quality. JD Camp says Electroplankton, <laughs> although he says Electroplankton plus drugs. Uh, a, a smidge of a confession, Jeff. Electroplankton never did a whole lot for me. Just hey, same. I know it's more of a vibe than a game, but eh. right. I, I was. I, that, that's when I was like not quite sold on what was happening with the DS because Electroplankton was early, right? Uh, in my memory, it was maybe. Uh, maybe. But it, but it was like right. I, I'm like uh, I don't think I need to get this game, so I like passed on it after after trying it. Yeah. All right, we got a bunch more here. Why don't we take a break? We'll come back. We'll get to the rest of these. Sounds good. Penny needs to go outside. What I mean, the fuck is Electroplan? Uh, it's like a musical experience game. Interactive uh, interactive toy is how I would, I would describe it. Interactive toy is a good way of putting it. It's like mm-hmm. the kind of thing you would find within WarioWare touched, blown up into a full game. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, right. Man, the DS ruled. The DS is great. Like good system. Yeah, it's just a ton of fun, weird stuff on that thing. Man, I fired up. Sure. I don't know if you remember your game as lore here, but that uh, DSi XL I hunted down like several years ago mm-hmm. now, so uh-huh. I could play some games. I busted that out again to play, uh, well, in part a little bit of um, uh, Ghost Trick on it, but also wow. some other games. Man, just the DSi XL fucking ruled. Yeah, it's such a good. System. I don't know if I ever got a DSi XL, and I, I think I did. Is bought, that the one you have? I think I bought one recently. Uh, but I like oh, at the time. Okay. Oh, that's right. 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 And so they, I didn't, I didn't. And then like, when I finally tried it, I'm like, this thing actually is fantastic. Uh, and it's, yeah. it, I mean, it, I skip. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I, I was, go, go, I was go. just, yeah, I, I, um, w- like was trying to play DS games on the 3DS when I hacked that. I'm like, this is okay. But actually the games do look a little bit funky on the 3DS screen. I told you. You're right. Told you. And so it was like getting it on a legit DS made all the difference. It like, they look so good on that system. Yeah, I just I skipped the DSi entirely because that came out when I was what, like just entering high school or something like that. And wow, <laughs> I get it. You're young. <laughs> You're not that much older. Than me. <laughs> um, but I was just like, it's a DS Lite with a camera. I don't, why the fuck would I want this? Like right. I already had like a cell phone at the time. I was like, this, this is dumb. So I just uh, skipped directly to the 3DS and I didn't realize, I don't think most people realize the DSi was actually like good hardware and it was yes. just a better made oh, DS. Yeah. 
yeah, yeah especially the XL. If you get the XL, you are always guaranteed to have some really high quality IPS screens. So yep, I, really uh, shines. Yeah, I like that thing a lot now that I've go, gone back to it. Um, yeah, I'm, I've just been in the mood recently for like, hey, legit experiences on those DS and 3DS systems. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I'm gonna be playing more of that. That's that's the way it go for all things. You know, we we love our emulation around here, but yeah. if you can play the games on original hardware, just like with a flash card or with a you know. Uh, hard drive mod or whatever you want to do like that's the best way to do it man i love i love chris person he's got bellatra running yeah. on a crt hell <laughs> oh, yeah oh uh, fuck yeah god he's the, so fucking cool that music does fucking rip in that game it yeah, is it's so really good. good yeah it's very good uh, like i was everything uh, about that game presentation wise yes. is very good I was just like, I, I had to like turn down and like the, you know, that background wine picks up and I was just like, oh, yeah. I got, I'm feeling this. And I like turned it up I was and I was like, like dancing sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's really, really good. Let me tell you, Jeff, Colorado night and some Domino's pizza. That, that would hit. Blotro on the second that screen. Would that hit. was good. Absolutely. Man. That would, <laughs> that sounds really very good, good to me. <laughs> oh yeah. Look at this. And he has a, he has a little list on there. Yep. Sexy little list. Mm. That's a sna- a snack box, probably. Yeah, it looks like it. Man. I've been looking around here in Argentina, which is really hard. I've been looking around for people that print boards, but I can't mm-hmm. find people. Everybody who prints boards are like, no, we do like in the, in the hundreds of boards. So it's like, oh shit. I'm Just back. One, one. Oh Can no, that's go? the one I have. That's the Bridget. Oh, the Bridget? Hey, good taste. That's pretty cheap, isn't it? So like seventy yeah. bucks, something like that. Uh, hundred bucks shipped. Hundred bucks. Man, I very, very reasonable. I love Matt Piscatello this week, just stunting on these hoes, just like nonstop. <laughs> like the mobile tablet kids have grown up, and what they want is now mainstream. Sorry to thirty-three-year-old podcaster Rob. Uh, you got some gray in your beer there, Rob. I'm like hell yeah, I Matt. Fucking out. destroy Jesus. the you know me. He's talking about me too, but still, yeah, like, I'm believe, uncomfortable. No actually, fucking a. It's me actually. It's good All stuff. right, ready? Yep, bring All us back right. whenever you're ready, Mike. We're back. We got some more Nintendo DS hidden gems, like this one from Razzle Jazzle. It says Dragon Quest Monsters Joker. This is like the Dragon Quest Pokemon esque spinoff. They're entitled since Pokemon was just inspired by Dragon Quest V. Right. I always did hear good things about this one specifically. Yeah, I've heard people talk fondly about these games. Uh, Warden Cliff says N plus. Remember God. N plus? Yeah, I that do was a remember whole thing N+. for a while. I don't there. think about it until someone brings it up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But there was a time where I was like, yeah, N plus. Everyone, everyone's into N plus. It. If you don't know, it's like a pretty minimal two D platformer. Um, kind of like, like a Super proto- Meat Boy Super era. Meat Boy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. yeah, Super, yeah, Super Meat Boy esque. Uh, Velocity Prime says Henry Hatsworth in the Puzzling Adventure. There you go. Definitely uh, in the pantheon of these games. Yes. Running Riot has Mega Man Star Force 2. Uh, it's funny. There's a lot of battle network uh, love and nostalgia. Star Force, I know, was received worse at the time. But I do know some people who still hold a candle for Star Force. I have never played a second of a Star Force game, even though I'm a big Mega How Man guy. How do these guy. play? My, they play kind of like battle network, but it's like the perspective is different. It's behind the Mega Man guy. And I think it's so it's an arena fighter. OK, timeline. I got you. It's not an arena. Yeah, I don't <laughs> think so. And yeah, I don't know. I I've, maybe someday I'll check out a Star Force game. Oh, here we go. Here's a so it's talking about Shin Megami Tensai. Here's Shin Megami Tensai Strange Journey. Um, despite the subtitle, this is basically a mainline SMT game. It's also really cool because this is the one with a uh, ton of the thing vibes. You're a group. Yeah, it is. In okay. Antarctica. Is there so. any chance on earth I would enjoy this? Because I think it has the most fucked up, cool looking box art in the yes, history it, of the it, world. It does. It is. I, yeah. Play the intro. I, the intro is like two hours long and you, you will get hooked. If okay. really yeah. I, I, cause I When I finally did play it, the intro got me a little bit. And then because it's like a main ISMT game. Uh, it, it's very hard in the beginning. Like you'll just encounter enemies that will maybe just wipe your party with one spell, and like, oh well, hope you saved recently. Um, but the vibe and the style is very cool in this one. Again, I love the thing vibes it has. Just for audio listeners, there's like a weird looking. It's like if you were to filter a, a stormtrooper through like a medieval Buck fantasy, and then, and, and then back, yeah, and then back through Buck Rogers, yeah, uh, yeah. and then he's got holding just a giant fucking gun, 
and then and like underneath his art like robotic armor it looks like he's just like wearing a columbia like snow jacket it's it's fucking cool as hell yeah and again like i think this game was was almost cold what shimigami tensai for at the time it, it it is just a main installment in that franchise is in a lot of people's favorite input name here says planet puzzle league this is just tetris attack paneled upon with a stylus um yeah you know it's funny as much as i love um pokemon puzzle league again you know, Nintendo loved this aesthetic starting with the Wii and DS generation. We saw it a bit today where everything's just very clean and kind of white. And this definitely has that aesthetic to it instead of fun Pokemans. So that always threw me off a little bit. I never actually played this version of Puzzle League. Puzzle yeah, one of those weird book uh, DS games. Yeah, I, I always like the the games that you held like vertically, I guess is what you would call it. Um, Hotel Dusk Likes. Yes, Hotel Dusk Likes. I never heard people talk about this one much in the way that like, you yeah. know, Tetris DS was like, oh, no, this is like the new Tetris game. You should be playing Tetris DS. That, uh, that game ruled. Yeah, Pl Planet Puzzle League, you would assume like could easily have done the same thing and catch on with like the kind of people I was following at the time. I never heard anyone talk about this. As a Clark has Picto Chat. Picto Chat was fun times. Yeah. Uh, drawing, drawing dicks. Drawing dicks. Absolutely. Disappointing Miyamoto. Absolutely. Yep. Uh, Swass has, while looking for this image, I learned that there was a sequel. No clue about that, but this game was fantastic. It's Space Invaders Extreme. I do remember hearing people liking this I one. I like this game. This was very good. Willow Davis has Metroid Prime Hunters, the demo version specifically, <laughs> I believe, here, that we all got with our DS. Hey, it's just like as a tech demo, it was pretty cool because that, that was a big leap from the Game Boy Advance. We just had a first person shooter from Nintendo on our DS. Uh, controlling it was funky and weird, but the fact that it existed was neat. Uh, you uh, got that book from RGT85 uh, today. So uh, he uh, was in Very a nice. Metroid Prime Hunters clan. Hell yeah. Because he played it competitively, I suppose. I, I guess he must Hell have. Yeah. yeah. Fluffy Cloud Gamer says, back when they used to make Sims games with stories, it's the herbs, Sims in the streets. I can never tell people are joking or not when they say they like the herbs. I never played it. I don't really know what goes on in the herbs. I'm like, I'm, like, uh, I'm so curious about these games. I, I should just check them out on a stream or something. I should just like play this on my like Twitch channel. It seems like it could so easily be offensive. <laughs> I, maybe, maybe. The, the herbs. All right. Uh, Screaming Madden says someone took my Age of Empires DS suggestion. So for a fresh answer, I'll offer Zookeeper. Basically, it's bejeweled with a cube, zoo, coat of paint. I do remember people liking zoo, coop, Zookeeper as far as DS puzzle games went. Yeah, in terms of animals that have been boxed up, like this one is like not up there with Cubivore, but yeah, Zookeeper's definitely there. Uh, Jim Ryan, Soulless Ghoul says Super Mario Star World is a ROM hack that's been in the works for over 12 years. The latest demo just released on Xmas. So, yeah, this looks like a ROM hack of Super Mario 64 DS. That's pretty neat. Yeah, I've, um, I've heard cool things about this. I, I really hope this gets finished because I would love to play it. You think you could ever play Super Mario 64 DS again? Or you think you'd be like, why am uh, I not playing this with an analog stick? I, not too long ago, in like the last year or two, I, I got a hankering to like play Super Mario 64, but as Wario. So it was like someone had to have like just taken that character model from DS and put it into like the PC uh, 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 port that happened, but I couldn't find it anywhere. So I did track down the, the game and, and played it on the, on the DS so I could play that as Wario. Cause I always thought that was neat, um, but no one else does. So no one else has done the work to make that possible for me. If I had a million Liz says, I think it was eShop only, but I really like this weird little rhythm game by Game Freak. It's Harmon Knight. I did like Harmon Knight. I never played Harmon Knight. Yeah, it's one of those like auto runner rhythm games, right? Where you like you can like see when you need to jump or slide, and it goes with the rhythm of the song. It was fun stuff. Goes with I enjoyed the it. Rhythm of the song. Sorry. Big Tony, the Final Fantasy guy, says Final Fantasy Tactics Advance uh, Two or A Two. I know you love the original Advance. Do you uh, have any thoughts on A Two here? It's it wasn't as good for me. Uh, Advance is very good. Uh, A Two was like ah, this isn't like, quite as magical. You said wasn't it as good for me. That's like the way people talk about coitus. Yes, yeah. <laughs> the, the coitus I had with this DS game was not satisfactory to my penis. What the Mike? fuck? Shoot, hot All American right. <laughs> summer has Polarium, a game whose box art I always recognize, but uh -huh. I don't know if I really know what happens in a Polarium. Yeah, I, I have no idea what this plays like. I actually don't remember hearing... Like, this doesn't look familiar to me, actually. The stylus is involved, that's for sure. Yes, it's on, right there on the cover. 
Bugadil says one of Treasure's best is its Bangai O Spirits. Looks uh, that's got to be some kind of anime thing, right? Bangai O. Uh, yes, Bangai O is an anime. Uh, thanks, Jeff. Super hard, man. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I mean, you the asked the question. I, asked. I don't know why. I don't know you why. Asked, I'm like, I confirmed. I know for a fact it's an anime. <laughs> It's just, it's just, it's just funny. Uh, Super <laughs> Harmonist Dragon Quest Nine, Sentinels of the Starry Skies, which is a, a very good Dragon Quest. Actually, I enjoyed I what I played of this. I played, it, and I I played really like ten it. hours. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. That's a yeah, that's a time for you in a JRPG. Yeah. Uh, Days and Man Two says, "Gosh, shout out one of my favorite Atlas games, Radiant Historia." This is really high on my backlog of uh, JRPGs I need to play. I think there's kind of a enhanced version or whatever on the 3DS. This is a game people bring up all the time as, hey, you like Chrono Trigger? You should play Radiant Historia. Oh, really? Apparently pretty similar that. vibes. Huh. Not, yeah. I mean, look, I don't know if it's as good as Chrono Trigger. I think it, quality-wise, I think it also has, like, some of that time travel stuff is why it gets brought up. Right, still, just so, even being brought up is like, hey, this right. is a game for the Chrono Trigger fans. That's cool. Yeah, so uh, Radiant Historia is something I definitely want to check out. Hey, Ant the Soft, talking about Square Enix games, right? We have Mario Hoops 3 <laughs> on 3. Uh... It's wild at that game. That's the only time I got a Mario basketball game, except for uh, NBA Street Volume 3, of right. course. Is there basketball in that, like, trio sports game that had hockey in it? I, maybe. I can't remember what the three games were in that one. More Mario Sports Mix. I know it's not supposed to be very good. Yeah. Uh, Mario Hoops, the thing I think of with that game is always the one-up show of Luke Smith talking to Brian Intahar about Mario Hoops 3 on 3 and then realizing those guys go on to direct Destiny and and Marvel Spider-Man like the biggest games in the That's world. Funny. So it's always like <laughs> it's a great clip to like drop on Twitter every once in a while. Duminal Crossing says substantially better than it has any right to be. Would Loki be hyped if there was a sequel? It's Metroid Prime Pinball. I'd be so happy if I could play Metroid Prime Pinball right now. I love Metroid Prime Pinball. It's like it's it's one of the better like pinball video games, but I just love how much it captures that really distinct Metroid Prime aesthetic, right? It's got yeah. the music and the sounds and even the visuals. Metroid Prime Pinball is fantastic. Yeah, this is one I might like just put on a emulator on my phone because it'd be one that I could yeah. probably pre play pretty easily that way. Uh, and they having the dual screens like just one attached screen is actually pretty cool. And I, I think it's it's a. Uh, like title music is the same title music from Metroid Prime Two, and that title track is maybe my Very favorite good. Metroid song. I love it. Brockness Monster says Dragon Ball Z RPG really good. This is Dragon Ball Z Attack of the Saiyans. Uh, man, they, they're, they're making a bunch of these for the portables for a while. They're actually pretty good Dragon Ball Z games. Nice to see it. Um, Weezman says Sonic Team mini games. Tell Dan this is better than WarioWare. It's the Rub Rabbits. Is this a sequel to Feel the Magic XXXY? I think it's like in the same vein. Yeah, but Rub Rabbits was definitely like similar to that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it might even be a direct sequel. It, it could be, better. yes. I mean, I did. It they, is, says Weezman. Okay. Thank you. Very cool. Uh, Tink says this in its sequel, it's more Leapy Agents. You can't go wrong. This is, uh, I, yeah, I should, for how much I love Leapy Agents, I should play these games. Although, like, I will miss not having the kind of pop, um, you know, uh, Western songs that is a large part of Leap Agent's fun to me, but still, I'll take what I can get. Uh, Ali Miracle says, This music, the music amazing. It's Sonic Rush. I did enjoy Sonic Rush. Uh, I, might, I might even like it more than the advanced games, I think, when it comes to Sonic. I never played Sonic Rush Adventure. Remember that one was weird because it kind of had like Wind Waker esque sailing or something, or at least like boat traversal. I don't know. My but favorite people still. Talk about Sonic Rush. My favorite Sonic game on the DS was uh, the Bioware RPG. Oh my God! Yeah, that was your um, Chronicles. Yeah, yes, Jesus. right. Yeah. Rachel Kayser says, "Hide your gems better." It's the Hardy Boys treasure on the tracks. This is the most Rachel Kayser looking game I've ever seen in my life. I bet you love it. I bet it is fun though. I could <laughs> let's play a Hardy it's Boys a game. game. Why not? It is a man. It is a Sega game. It's incredible. And uh, Turbo Sean also has 999 here, but some different looking box art. It looks a lot more Japanese or something on this one. I don't know. Um, and yeah, maybe someday I'll play a 999. I don't know. Uh, the real quick, since ahead. Mike mentioned the box art, the character designer, actually my favorite video game artist of all time, uh, Kinu Nishimura. Oh, yeah. okay. Cool. Yeah. Uh, is, it, is the Damn game nine hours long the, uh, or is it longer than that? 
All right, you stupid idiot. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I think I think that's uh, no, the artist is notable because she did a lot of Capcom work, uh, a lot of stuff for like Street okay. Fighter 2 and uh, Dark yes. Stalkers. You and can stuff see like that. that. Okay. They, yeah, they, um, they, I don't know. They're, but um, I think they did um, for Kino Fighter. Yeah, there was a lot that's of it. like crossover work and stuff that she did. Yeah, it's very iconic work if uh, any video viewers are looking at it right now. So one that I remember in the middle of it that no one brought up. Uh, remember Looney Tunes Duck Amuck? Oh, my God. That's a good one. Yeah. People should play that game because it's legit cool. It's cool. It's like it's it's kind of short for what it was back in the day. But these yeah, days, but it, who cares? It captures Duck Amuck. Like it's everything you yeah. would want from something that's called Duck Amuck. Right. It's just like about this one specific classic Looney Tunes short. And you just kind of fuck around with Daffy Duck. Yeah, <laughs> you're the artist. The like there's a, an old cartoon where uh, the artist like has like the pencil and goes and he's drawn on the screen and he messes with Daffy Duck in the cartoon. The game is that, but you are the artist and it's really neat. And uh, the, yeah, of course, really what cool. I remember of that is Justin McElroy telling the story of like, hey, you're supposed to draw draw uh, Daffy Duck's horse or like like it just the game just says draw a horse and of course Justin McElroy ju- drawed a penis and then Daffy Duck jumps on it goes riding my steed <laughs> and then like rides the penis <laughs> off the screen <laughs> and uh, uh, that story gets me all the time I think about it and laugh to this day yeah Duck and Muck is very cool all right that's it for the Nintendo DS uh, that's fun uh, Christian we took three breaks Do you need another one should we uh, just get to the rest of the show here I should let's just get to the rest of the show all right um, yeah. Jeff I haven't played any switch games exactly but two games that i have been playing a lot of this week do have switch versions and these aren't super intense games i imagine the switch is a completely fine way to play them but lots of bellatro uh still really enjoying that for people who don't know haven't heard us scream about it yet this is the poker roguelike game that is just very addicting it's a ton of fun i've gotten a few wins in and i'm just motivated to tr- like get you know it keeps track of how many times you win with each deck so want to win with each deck at least and all this other stuff really really uh special surprising game here yeah i uh, i did get my win today uh after we after we got done with hey, the podcast I, I see i knew my teasing would motivate you oh yeah of course yes and uh it was you know just kind of slowing things down a little bit uh, one of the tricks that really helped is you know you mentioned like moving the jokers and that's something i had started to do and realizing putting the the, the big multiplier at the end of that was something like I was just beginning to piece together and like do more consistently, but slowing down and actually checking and seeing what's left in my deck because the game ca- counts cards for you. So if yeah. you just hit like the left trigger or right trigger, one of them, I, both do, they both do something. I think the left trigger is like a quick way to just to see how many fours you still have left, how many clubs you still have left. And then there's a grid that shows you actually exactly which cards are left. But if you have, you know, three fours and you're waiting for that fourth four, well, is it still even in the deck? Well, you could check. And if it's not there, then stop waiting, trying to get a four of a kind and just exactly. play for something else. And it's like, once I started doing that, then it's like, okay, I am actually maximizing my chances to do what I'm trying to do. And that, that has really helped. I'm not like wasting discards anymore and stuff like that. So that kind of took me through to the end. And I thought I would put it down. Now I'm doing the same thing. I want to beat it with every deck. So it's, it's really addictive. It's super fun, uh, but I also had a lot of fun with RZ, the Jewel of Faramore. I'm glad you this, played through that, because I mean, you seemed excited watching it, and I'm glad it like carried over to you actually experiencing it. Right. When I watched you play it on Giant Bomb, I was kind of giddy, and I heard about this. I knew it was a thing, but like seeing it even as a game, it was so much more than I could have hoped for. They really did capture that awful Zelda CDI aesthetic and game look, and but made it fun, right? Uh, it made it playable, made it interesting, but the joke never got old of me. And the game knows what it is. It's not a super long game. You'll beat it in like around three hours, which is good. And if you want to, you can go back. There's collectibles and little side missions to do. But just as this fun little three hour romp, it was perfect. I love this idea of taking famously bad games and doing tributes to those. And that still keeps what's kind of fun and charming about what made it bad. And it was such a way that you can't stop thinking about it, but making it something a lot more digestible. Yep. It's just a, a, a really good like uh, blueprint for how to do something that is paying homage to something that is fundamentally bad. It's like, you no, know, there's still a lot of fun to be had here. Um, you know, it really is that like, Hey, there's no difference between good and bad things. It's like, well, no, there is, but you could still have a lot of fun with the bad things, especially if you know why we all generally agree they're bad 
and you play those things up and you know what works and what doesn't and you get all the like the annoying stuff out of the way which this, this game does you know there's no loading times they're not that's not part of the joke no the joke right. is the weird animation and all the fun voice acting right and, and that's like, all there's there. an great. option to make up be the jump button or whatever right but it's right. not like that on default <laughs> Exactly. It's not insane. Yes. There's no lives, right? Like when you die, you just go back to the start of that screen. There's even checkpoints for some of the larger screens. So yeah, it's just it's not a painful game to play at all. Uh yeah, I don't know. I, I really recommend it. It's definitely been like I played a lot of really good games this year. Uh, but this has maybe been my biggest surprise. I'm really impressed with what they did here. Yeah, I like it a lot. Um I uh, Bolatro is what I mostly have been playing. Um beyond that, the kid is still playing a lot of stuff on Switch, so uh, now she's playing some stuff on N64 NSO. We, we were playing Pilot Wings, a few other things. Like she was like thinking of Pilot Wings. We must have played it a while ago. And she comes to me today and she's like, there's a guy on a surfboard and he can be in the air. He could be in land. And there's a man with a shirt and there's, and it's not animals you're playing as you're playing as people. And like, I was like listening game after game. And I was like, always in my back of my mind, like, is she talking about pilot wings? What is, what does she mean? <laughs> and then like finally I showed it to her and she's like, yeah, that's it. I'm like, oh, weird. Okay, fair enough. Uh, so we played some pilot wings today and mostly it's just fun because I have that wireless N64 and a, a Nintendo Switch controller and I always ha uh, like having a reason to get that thing out. It's cool to just have a wireless N64 controller that's official and feels really good. I like using that thing a lot. And uh, so, yeah, it was just kind of great to get back to that. I know I make fun of cozy games, but that was a pretty cozy game for me back in the day. Pilot Wings 64, especially that mode where you can just kind of fly around yep. the island and look for like goofy little Easter eggs or hidden things like go through the cave and all that stuff. Right. And the gyrocopter um, has a fucking missile launcher on it. So, yeah. uh, so it's, it's only so cozy. You can go blow shit up. Uh, yeah, nah, there's a Mount Rushmore you can attack and then not understand what a Mount Rushmore is and get mad on Jeff. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Jeff on Twitter. It'd be great. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah. That's fun stuff. Um, I know, you know. I'm kind of surprised we even got a new Pilot Wings game on the 3DS. I th I still think I could go for another one. We should uh, do another Me one too. of those, Nintendo. I, I know that they kind of do them as um, tech demos. That's always kind of what they are. Like the first one was a sure. Mode 7 tech demo. The N64 was clearly a 3D tech demo. Um, the 3DS one kind of seemed like them being like, well, we'll do some stuff with 3D. Um, we but made this island for Wii Sports Resort. I mean, why might not? as well use it. Yeah, exactly. Uh but I hope they just bring it back and just make a good game because I, I I always like the pilot wings games. Jeff, did we get any more super chat sent in? We did, yeah. Let's see here. Um, I think we start here with Connell Wood. Lightning died on the way back to her home planet. <laughs> yeah, I called Lightning a poochie. Uh, that kind of almost happened in the story, I think. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of. And then she got turned to an angel or something. Uh, Valkyrie. 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 Yeah, Lightning Return sounds it? just absolutely <laughs> wild. We will still rank her on the Final Fantasy Waifu's uh, tier list podcast. She's great. I, I love her. Uh, Aramis Baramus says, DS Hidden Gems, Jake Hunter Detective Stories. I had no idea about this series until post-COVID, and it hits the detective noir style so well. I've huh. never heard of these. There's a bunch of detective games on the DS, huh? I guess it's kind of lent, lent itself to those. Yeah. Um, Cody Clements says, a co-worker sent me a Bellatro screenshot he took today. 77 million in a single hand. Disgusting. Wow. I, uh, yeah. I saw My it. My friend got yeah, a 20, 20, 22 million hand. I um, just... looked up uh, Bellatro on TikTok uh, just to be like, Are, is, it, is anyone talking about this? And they're not. it's not like trending. It's not like taking off. But one guy has one where he's like, uh, basically, he was doing that that king thing that one that I had that uh, that deck of, and it was basically an infinite loop. So it was like twelve to the like twenty two power, like it was twelve wow. to twenty two zeros after it, or something like that. So it was like it can just keep going if you set things up right. Um, let's see here from Eden. Her limit breaks, her tank busters, her square and, e and her enixes, her podcast sponsors, her Christians and her Sean's, her giant bombs, her uh, and then great pod boys. Thank you, Eden. Thank you. Appreciate that's, uh, that. Hey, that's fun. Keep sending those in. <laughs> yes, please. Dr. Ryan says, super chatting to get one more DS game in. Shout out to Retro Game Challenge. That is a really good one. Uh, the Game Center CX game that was a sick throwback to NES games. Yeah, it was a Game Center CX game in Japan, and then they super localized it for the West with as Retro Game Challenge. 
and it's fantastic. And it was like huh. an early 8-4 play joint, Might, maybe before they were called 8-4 play. Uh, so they, there's a lot of like EGM alum stuff in there. Like Dan Shue is in there as Dan Sock, yeah. and I, I love that. It's so weird to me that I missed this one because it totally seems like my jam. I don't know how I did that. It would be a good one to go back to today. It would be a fun yep. one for a stream. Like, I, like it really does sure. hold up. Uh, Cajun Goat uh, dropped a super chat uh, and then dropped another one that actually had a message. Let's read that. I ordered parts today. I'm going to build an arcade cabinet with a touchscreen and run Bellatro on it like a video poker machine. Oh, oh my God. Yeah. That's Cajun so cool. We, we need updates. Uh, send pictures, send Definitely video. Send when, yeah, get that stuff in the, that in the Discord. Amazing. Show us the final build. Yep. That sounds that so sounds, cool. That sounds incredible. God, that'd be fun. Cool. That's an incredible idea. Good uh, on you. That does it for the Super Chats. Uh, Cajun think, Goat, that's uh, very exciting. Yeah, I saw uh, what, there, there's some, there's like a new chip for the GameCube my brother showed me. That lets you like you know mod it without soldering and stuff like that. So yep. I might be dissecting one of my four game cubes and maybe I'll try that. Um, well, Jeff, sometimes you simply know when you just recorded the worst podcast in history. Yep, sometimes you do know that. And with that, let's hit this button and get out of here. <laughs> and that's great. We have to thank Emron and our dream selves for that <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah, but there's that new Nick Cage movie. It like people just dream about him, and I'm like, that's. I think it's starting to happen to us, Mike. Here it is. Yeah, that was great, great. Uh, uh, hey, Blight Club tomorrow. Maybe tomorrow I'm beating this Mortal Kombat Mythology game. I mean, at the very least, least of it. he's playing more mythology. Don't miss out on it, people. It's it's too it's, good of a time. It's sad. What else is happening on Giant Bomb? Uh, hey, who could possibly know? Uh, what, what are we doing? I think tomorrow's kind of a normal day. Uh, and then Thursday, I'm going to finish our Zach. Uh, after Game Mess Mornings, so look out for that. But Game Mess Mornings is happening tomorrow, everybody. I think I'm going to have Lexi on. Uh, Lucy's traveling. We'll talk about the news. We'll talk about Jib fucking Ryan and all that stuff. Fun stuff. Yeah, and we'll be back some uh, on Thursday with Game Mess Decides. Uh, we'll do another Game of the Year thing, whichever year we're on. 2016, maybe. Who knows? Bye. Bye, everybody. Cruise style. Cruise Should do the hell of our on. I'm just saying, oh, no, if the game has it. nine hours on the box and it's longer than nine hours, that's kind of annoying. <laughs> it's kind of nine <laughs> hours. You're kind of right. <laughs> just, we, we have less sounds because we, we don't have enough boost on the Discord. So oh, no. please boost the Discord. Oh, man. I was trying to save money. Bye, everybody. It's super, 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 super,